Generation Podcast, man. I'm your host, Malak Arif. And today, I have a legend, man. And I'm talking about one of my favorite basketball players that ever came out of city, man. And I don't that's not a term that I use lightly, man. I'm talking about, I remember seeing this brother 20 years ago, man, shaking and baking, cooking, man. I'm talking about none other than two-time all met. We talk about four-year career at South Carolina University, 14-year pro known all over the circuits in, in, the, in the city. I'm talking about none other, the one, the only, Trey Kelly, man. What's going on, brother? Man, thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm excited about this, man, definitely. Nah, no doubt, no doubt. Like I said, man, I remember you you, you shaking and baking. I remember you you cooking, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, 20 years ago, man. I've been following your career ever since, uh, Trey. And uh, it's an honor, man, truly an honor to have you on a, uh, on the pla- on a, on a platform. And I want to, um, you know, I want to start from the beginning, Trey. Uh, mm-hmm. First of all, man, what you, uh, you know, what you got going on now, man? I, you, there's a big announcement that just uh, took place, man. So, so talk about that, Trey. Absolutely. Um, I just became the, the boys basketball coach, the head coach at Dunbar Senior High School, uh, my alma mater. Um, something I'm extremely excited about. Um, it, it was something I thought about a little over the years, but I, I didn't really give it a lot of deep thought because I was still in my basketball career. Oh, no. um, when the when the you know the talk started happening with the people at the school, oh, no. um, and I think you know right now it's just the right time. You know, um, looking at the city, looking at the school itself. Um, you know, I'm in the midst of you know wanting to change and and, and revive the culture. Um, that's something that I, you know when I came up, you know it was it was a special culture to be a part of. Um, and to be known now, you know, all over this place, um, you know, as a legend, you know, some people oh, throwing no. that around, you know, some people. Hey, Trace, you're a legend, bro. Let's, let's, I mean, you know, I, I know you're humble. I know you're modest, bro. Yeah, Trace, I just, you're a legend, I bro. let others, you know, judge <laughs> that. You know, for me, it was just all hard work, pushing myself, man, just trying to get yeah. through. Um, and you never, you know, you never go into it saying that you want to be this or want to be that. No doubt. Um, you just want to be successful. And you know that was that was my push. You know that was my the vision that I had for myself. Um, but you know being able to, to to go back to where it really started for me, in the sense of you know wanting to be a pro, um, thinking that I could be a pro. You know while I was there at, at Dunbar, and just using it as a stepping stone to propel my basketball career and really my life. No doubt. So Trey. Now that you um become now that you are the new head basketball coach at uh, at your alumni Dunbar High School, you know talk about what are you planning on bringing to the program, man? Because a lot of people may not know who's not from the area, man. Dunbar is a story program, man. So just 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 expound on it a little bit. Uh, for me, man, just kind of like reviving that culture. Period. You know, when you go inside of Dunbar's gymnasium, um, it's a new you know a new building, it's a new gym and everything, but. You know, I, I think when a lot of people walk in there, they can still kind of um, envision what it used to look like in the old building. No doubt. Um, they still have all the same banners, you know, that they used to have in the old building. You know, when you look up there, man, you, you, you just feel something when you see all those names up there, all the championship banners, no starting with 1975 and Stacey Robinson and, you know, those no guys, um, uh, Anthony Jones, Tyrone Gibson, um, Daryl Prue. You know all these different guys um and you know i want to i want to revive that and even make it better you know there's a, there's a new generation of course um you know but but helping the generation intertwine with the old in a sense no and you know you know by bringing the winning culture back um kind of reviving the culture in the city you know um, when i was coming up we didn't want to really go to the private schools and the catholic schools you know we wanted to right. stay home I um, wanted to stay in DC because it was, you know, it was it was it was a lot of grit in our town. Um, it was a lot of you know fighting. I mean that in a good way. You know, people um, really getting after it, competing, um, being able to. You know, I mean, you, you you created rivalries just by playing one game. You know, you go play against Cardoza, play against Easton, play against Woodson, Spengon. No um, those were those were huge rivals. Just by one game, you know, just by the, maybe even the last game that you played against them, you created a rivalry with that. Okay. So um, I want to I want to recreate that, you know, and, and um, it's about development for me. You know, 
the exciting thing about this is is that I've walked the same lines as the, these kids. I mean, that's really the the important piece for me um, coming in this thing with experience. Okay. You know, not as a not as a head basketball coach either. Right. Just more someone that was able, you know, to be in the ninth grade and go to Dunbar um, when they when they first started letting uh, ninth graders play varsity. Okay. Um, coming into Dunbar with a lot of things on my mind, a lot of things on my heart. Um, you know, troubled childhood, a tragic childhood, and coming into Dunbar, you know, at 14, 15 years old, and just trying to make a way, um, you know, for myself, you know, wanting my family to be proud of me, wanting my neighborhood to be proud of me. Um, and th those are what these kids are going through now, right? They want their families to be proud of them. That's why the parents are the way that they are, you know, going to all the games and all that kind of stuff. And, talking to the coaches, trying to find the right school. They want their kids to succeed and the kids want to succeed. So, you know, I know what it's like to be in that same seat and I can't wait to, you know, uh, pass my knowledge and, and and have them under my tutelage. You know? no. Now, hey, Trey, um, I'm going to be honest, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you, brother, man. Like I, I, I would never, I would have never thought that, you know, that you would come back, man, to, 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 I could see you coming back to the community, community, but coming mm -hmm. back as a head coach, man, like it's, it's it's almost like it's coming full circle. So, with that being said, is it you know? And you don't have to give me any names, but is there any any uh, student athletes that you see that you can see yourself in, you know, currently right now, whether they're at other schools or whether they're at Dunbar, you know, just just talk about that a little bit. Um, the kid Rob Dockery at Wilson. Okay. Um, he's you know, nice. I, yeah, he's, nice. Well, he's really nice. He's cold, he, yeah. You know, he just needs to be polished from a basketball standpoint. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of see myself in him. And I really, I can't, honestly, I can't compare myself or these kids to myself because I was totally different. Like, I was, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was different. Right, right, right. I was really, my approach was just so different. Yeah. Um, but I do see that in his eyes in, in a bit. You know, I heard a little bit about the background and I know, a lot of things that you know he's he's going through as a kid. Okay. You know, you know, um, I've I've talked to him. You know, we we have a, a bit of a relationship. You know, I want to help him even though he's not at Dunbar. It's not even about that. You know, okay. just wanting to lend my hand and lend some knowledge to him. Um, um, and and you know, I he's he's like my favorite in the, in the DCIAA currently. Yeah, be careful, Trey. You 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 I mean, I, now. I, you know you know going to Dunbar. Of course, I'll have a totally new favorite. You know, <laughs> October thirty first. Right, right, right. I get it. Yeah, when I'm on the sideline, but yeah. um, you know it's about it's about DC, man. I mean, we no we, we we had that. We've always had that camaraderie, so it doesn't matter. You know which which school the kid goes to. You know, when I see him in between the lines next year. You know, I gotta I gotta get after him, trap him, and yes, sir. You know, him left. And, you know, yeah, 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 man. Yeah, the team, man. He, yeah, but he, if he, I had to name anybody, you know, that he's I the ops. <laughs> sure, for sure. If I had to name anybody that I saw myself in, you know, it would be him. Just a talented young kid who, okay. you know, you could tell, you know, comes from a a, a, a gritty background and you uh -huh. know just, you know, just wants to get it done. Okay. So look, um, you just mentioned, man, it's hard to, for you to compare yourself to, you know, a lot of the kids, that, you know, with, 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 uh, it's hard to compare yourself to a lot of kids that you, that you see out here today, because again, brother, your walk was different. Not saying that these kids doesn't have a, you know, they, they don't come from different backgrounds, different situations, right? but you had a very different, uh, story, man. And, and your motivation, man, and your dedication to the game. I, I i feel like it's something that is very rare so with that said man i want to go back to the beginning man i want to go back to the beginning let's 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 talk about the beginning you you um are originally from northeast dc absolutely yeah northeast um, around the saratoga brentwood area talk, talk about that man what was it like growing up around that area man in in the the late 80s uh 90s man talk about that a little bit uh it was a unique place um and i think you know when you when you look at the inner city neighborhoods um, it's it's always unique, you know. It's right. <clears throat> there's crime, right? But mm -hmm. there's not a lot of like there's not you can't break into houses like in apartments, you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things yeah. of that nature. That's how unique these places are. No um, it's it's a lot of family oriented friendships. Um, 
you know, when you grow up in in, in small circles like that. Okay. Um, uh, but it's a it's a very tough place. It was a very mm. tough place to grow up in. Um, I saw a lot, you know, I was able to see a lot, um, you know, mostly just awful things. But I always, you know, as I grew up, I always thought that those things help you if you if you use them the right way. You know, you're looking at all this violence, you're looking at all the drugs and, you know, the, the, the things that happen that plague these kind of areas. Right. And for me, it was, you know, it. I used it, you know, to, to make me stronger, you know, to give me a lot of courage. Okay. Um, and that's, that's just what I inherited from being in those circles, from being in, you know, outside just playing around and dudes coming through there just trying to tear the whole block down. You know what I'm saying? I was I was there inside of that, and you know to make it out of that, it's like you can go anywhere. You know, no. you can go anywhere and be able to survive. Um, and nothing really bothers me, man. Nothing. I don't. I'm not. I don't fear anything. I definitely don't fear any man. Um, I, I don't fear any situation. I always have faith, and I always have belief that I can get through anything that I'm going through because of that place, because of what I seen, because of what I was able to get through. No doubt, no doubt. I, I like I said when I when I see the intensity, you know, because I didn't watch you play um, when you was younger. I, I I had no idea where you was actually from, mm -hmm. but I used to see the intensity. I'm like, where does this come from? You're not a a large guy, but right. you had the heart of like a giant. For sure. And, and hearing yeah. you, you know, uh, tell your story, man, I, I I can definitely understand where that 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 hunger come from. But I want to I want to know, and I feel like a lot of people want to know, like. Trey, when did you start to fall in love with basketball? Who inspired you to even pick up the basketball? Was it is was there a particular player uh, from the neighborhood? Was there a particular play, a player in the professional leagues? You know, talk about that a little bit. So up until I was uh, about nine, I didn't really have much interest in the game. Um, I did watch as I was six years old. I watched a little bit of the finals with. Um, Michael and Scotty and those guys against Magic, um, the Lakers against the Bulls um, in, in 91. I watched a little bit of that finals, you know, just turning the TV, I watched it, something kind of caught my eye. Right. You kind of see Jordan kind of going off, he wins his first finals, um, gets the, you know, uh, finals MVP. Um, and, you know, that kind of, kind of pushed me a little bit to want to play, um, but I still didn't really go out and play. You know, I was, I imagined myself playing. That was it was a weird thing that I did, you know, that kind of helped me a little bit. Right, right, right. Um, like I would, you know, how you put the the, the hangers on the um, on the door, right, right. right. <laughs> you know, make it a make it a hoop and you know, right. even sock or something. Um, and I that's that was my basketball. You know, <laughs> that was what I was doing. <laughs> so I wasn't even really going out on the court at that right, time. Right. Um, but. Come, uh, I guess this was 1994. Um, I'm nine, and I'm I'm outside. So I used to carry a basketball outside, and I didn't have no shoes and socks on sometimes. And I would walk up the street and back up Saratoga Avenue, up 14th Street and back. Damn. Just you know, going through my legs and see how many times I can go through my legs without fumbling the ball. Right. And I was just doing that. I would just do that, you know, a couple of times a day. Sometimes shoot it right. up against the uh, the, the uh, over top of the building door um, of the apartment that we lived in. <clears throat> and um, a guy named Ernie Clark was driving by one day, and he was like, "Man, you know," because I was big. Actually, I was big for my age at the time. Right. Um, and he was like, "You know, you, you play ball, man." I was like, "Y'all don't really play ball, you know." I, you know, I like to shoot around sometimes, but I don't really play. And um, he was like, man, you should come play with us. And uh, that was number 12 Boys and Girls Club okay. right in Northeast, you know, where I grew up at. And, um, and my first game uh, was 94 um, at, at number 10 Boys and Girls Club in Northwest. Um, that's off, uh, number 10 is over there, like 14th Street, right? Yeah, 14th and Cliff. No, number 12, is, that's that's over there by Taff, right? No, nah, number 12 is, is right on Saratoga Avenue. Okay. Yeah, um, we don't have a, we never had a gym or anything. It was just like a small boys and girls club. We would let's go there, play pool, 
uh, ping pong and okay. you know, stuff like that. Um, gotcha. So we would always play at the other gyms, like number 10, um, number 11 in Southeast. Southeast, yeah. yeah number 14 yeah. on Benning Road. Mm-hmm. And we would play at those uh, at those boys and girls clubs when we did have games. Um, number 10 had its own league where you played all the games at number 10. Um, number 14 even had its own league too. Okay. So, you know, that was kind of my start to the game. And, you know, I, I still, to be honest with you, I still didn't have any aspiration of doing anything with it. I was just doing it because this guy asked me to play. I was a kid. I, I probably mm-hmm. wanted to be around other young guys, um, to, you know, to have fun. And that's just what it was about at that particular time. No doubt. Now, Trey, um, I, I, I did my little research, man. And um, well, I'm not, I'm not going to say little research, but I... I've done extensive research before I, I uh, took this interview. And matter of fact, man, I've, I've been reading upon you, man, for a while. But what I did not know that you lost an aunt and an uncle, mm-hmm. you know, within like, you know, two months apart. 1991. 1991. So so talk about that. And if you don't mind, brother, like, you know, talk about some of the, the tragedies that you that you've seen, you know, mm-hmm. that led to, you know, the ultimate tragedy that I want you to talk about, you know, if, you, if you up to it. But, um, yeah. you know, I really find I, I had again, I had no idea that you right. went through a lot of these things, man. So so mm-hmm. talk about being a young man experiencing that, that type of, uh, you know, tragedy at such a young age. So, um, you know, in, in, in 1991, you know, the family was hit pretty hard. Um, first few months of 1991 uh, with with my uncle being murdered and uh, my aunt being murdered and these are the oldest and the third oldest children of my grandmother okay. who i was extremely close with right um and i remember that time you know i was only six years old but i remember it being just like a like a black cloud over the family you know was, we saw people crying in those particular nights that we got the news um, not really understanding much, but you could just see everybody was just, um, you know, going through it, you know, um, in, the, in, in my grandmother's house where I grew up at, um, it was just like a, you know, a lot of energy sucked out of us, you know, as a family. Um, me personally, I didn't feel a lot of that because like I said, I didn't really know exactly everything that was going on. I just knew that they had passed away. I knew that we had to go to funerals, you know, I knew you know, that they were gone, but, um, you know, um, my connection with them wasn't so deep because they were older. Right. You know, I had younger aunts and uncles that I was more close with. Um, and now, this, even, now, if you don't mind me asking, is this, this your mother's side or father's yeah, side? Yeah, this is my mother's side. Okay. Yeah. So um, my mom's side, um, she was the fourth oldest out of seven. And, um, you know, close, very close knit family, always been my entire life, still is. And, you know, it was just a huge blow, um, you know, to the family to lose them too. And you can see, you know, that's just the the effects it had on all of us. Um, my cousin, um, who, uh, you know, we were like brothers growing up, he started living with my grandmother too. Um, so he lived, actually, live with my grandmother before I did um, after his dad had passed away so his dad was the first child that my, my grandmother had lost yeah. and then my aunt comes my aunt comes two months later oh, wow. and, and we lost her and that, you know like I said it was just a huge blow right. now that's no nah, that was a, um, just amazing man to, to you know for a young kid to see such you know tragedies a lot of people don't uh understand you know some of the things that kids see and, and you know they say kids are resilient but right. you know Absolutely. a lot of times I, you know i've seen and, and i know you've seen it as well you know we see kids that go through traumatic situations and, and life just stops for them and they, mm-hmm. they go a different direction so right. you know um i want i want to i want to fast forward a little bit you know because this is i feel like one of the ultimate tragedies and mm-hmm. you know um I, I was blown away when I heard about this story, um, you know, as, as a young adult, something mm-hmm. I'd never known, just seeing you play on a basketball court. Um, and, you know, when I read this, man, and it's amazing because my younger brother, he played with you. He never knew this. You right. know, to my knowledge, 
Mm -hmm. my, my younger brother, uh, Mashawn, he never told me any of these things about you. Right. So when I ended up re reading this, it just blew me away. So, so talk mm -hmm. about, um, I believe 1996. August. Uh, you 20. lost your mother um, in the month of August 1996. Uh, talk about that. Uh, what, what led to that? That. Uh, so, uh, Burgess, brother. We, we could go back to maybe like October 95. Okay. Um, and uh, we we had like a, it, there was a family across the street that we were pretty close with. Okay. And um, there was a mom, there was a dad, there were four children. And um, I was close with the oldest boy. And, um, you know, we were, you know, like, you know, we play sports together. You know, let's like just be outside and kind of, you know, being kids together, you know. Um, one night, my mom and I and the, the woman who was a good friend of hers needed a ride home from the grocery store one night. She makes a call to, it was either like her stepbrother or godbrother. And the guy comes to pick us up and takes us home. Um, he drops us off and I'm in the back seat behind the driver. My mom's behind the passenger. The guy is, I mean, the, yeah, the guy's driving and the, the woman who's my mom's good friend is in the passenger seat. And, you know, they live on the left side. We live on the right side of the street. Um, it's a one way. So um, he lets us out. She, um, the, the woman in the front gets out first. As my mom was getting out, you know, I see this eye contact between her and the guy. They had never met before, um, and I'm sure of that. They've never met before, but the the look was really cozy, if you ask me. Even at that age, at I was ten years old, so you can still remember that as so well. Wow. Yeah, at ten years old was something that I was like, yo, you know, whoa, you know, like what was that about, kind of thing. Right. Um, and you know maybe we just went on with our night we went home the, the woman went home that was it um less than a week later my mom takes me to the checkers on new york avenue and this is still 1995 so the checkers right there on new york avenue there's a days in right there yeah there's two like hotels that's been built in like the last maybe 15 years. Yeah, how about Johnson and all that? Yeah. Um, so she takes me to the checkers and the guy is there, the guy that was driving the car. Um, so it was then evident that, you know, they had started some kind of friendship, relationship kind of thing. Um, I had started seeing this guy, you know, more than I wanted to, of course, but my mom was still married to my dad. And you know, oh, kind you, of, no, hold on, hold on. Your mom was still with your your father at this time. Yes. Um, so I live with my at the time I lived with my mom and dad. So um, of course that began a lot of issues in the house. Um, over the next ten months, it was just a lot of chaos, man. Um, totally chaotic time for me as a kid. You know, when I think back on the events that happened in between October. In August, October 95, August of 1996, was just a lot of things going on. Um, one of the good things was, <laughs> you know, my dad, man, who I was like extremely close with, uh, just an amazing man. And you and your dad have the same name, I believe, right? Yes. I was junior. A, I'm, a, I'm the third. The third, you know, okay. You get Trey from. So, yeah. And uh, my dad hits the lottery for like, you know, like 30 grand. Um, that's a lot of money. Thirty grand, yeah, thirty grand a lot now. But that's 30, a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> grand was probably like fifty-five grand back yeah. then. <laughs> with inflation, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Down, right, and um, you know, we had like the you know how you crack your window sometimes in the, in the summertime. We could hear him coming up the street with the, with the ticket, you know, like just just like oh, uh, right, you know, right, right, right. You know, he's, <laughs> you know, he's ecstatic, <laughs> and you know. He went and bought this uh this this, this brand new chrysler um nice black all black candy candy black uh -oh. um, nice car you know what i'm saying and um you know i remember you know getting into it with him to, uh getting into the car with him the first time and that that old uh the old outcast album had just came out um, at aliens no nah, the southern playlist 
Oh, yeah. kind of like music. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. That came out a year. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. So, right. All right. Yeah, he used to play that. He used to play. Uh, he used to play uh, um, the Chronic. You know, so he used to play those two albums, kind of like yeah. back and forth in in the car. Um, you know, that was the, that was probably the height. You know, of of, of those ten months. Um, okay. 10, 11 months, um, but the lows were just tough, man. Just rough, you know, really rough to deal with as a kid. Um, come home one time, everything is gone out of the house. Every, I'm talking about everything. Somebody had came and stole everything. You oh know? man! Yeah, and I'm like, I'm, you know, 10, 11 years old, and I'm just like, you know, what? You know, just trying to figure out what's going on here. Doesn't even that doesn't even you know, this doesn't happen. You know, so what's what's going on here? You know, now, now, um, now, um I, I I did my research. Um, yeah, I know you you guys used to stay on Galt Street and you stayed in Brooklyn Manor. Is this? Yeah. So so we were on Galt Place. At Galt this, Place. This my time. bad. We had a house there. Okay. My mom and dad had a house there. No I spent probably you know sixty percent of my time in Brentwood too with my grandmother. Like every time I got a chance, I spent all summers there. I spent every break there, you know, my whole life, you know, so I, I grew up, I basically grew up around there because on Galt Place, you know, it wasn't the same. Um, it wasn't a lot of kids hanging out, you know, it wasn't a basketball court that we could just go and play on. So right. um, I did a lot of my hanging out, like outside in Brentwood, you know, when I would go to my grandmother's house every single weekend, no matter what. If, if there was no school on a Wednesday, I was going Tuesday night, spend Wednesday, I can go back home, you know, either Wednesday night or Thursday. You know, this is just how I wanted. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were on golf place at this time, and like I said, everything was gone one night. You know, and this was like shortly after Christmas, so this is like January. You know, I remember all of my stuff that I had just got for Christmas. I was Sega about to Genesis. ask, did they take your stuff too? Yeah, Sega Genesis, all this stuff was just gone. You know, so um, and and if you fast forward to that summer, that's when things. You know, really started to take its course and, and go extremely downhill. Um, I come on from school. This is like you know June at the tail end of the school year. Um, I come on from school, and at this 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 time, you know, my my mom and dad's marriage it just become extreme. You know, um, she wasn't coming. Let me, let me let me stop you one second. I hate yeah. to interrupt, yeah. uh, Trey, but I, I want to ask this question. You know, with with you know, with your dad winning the lottery, you uh, uh, did you ever think like they're going to get back to like this is a great situation? You know, was mm -hmm. that did it bring your your, your mom and your dad closer with a, you know with all this so, money coming? So, to so I, I honestly, man, I didn't know. I knew that she was having this this affair, and I did. I just didn't. I didn't see thing. I couldn't see things going like they went. Okay. You know, so I didn't, it was just like living in the moment, right. and it was, you know, living in the moment. So I didn't really think, okay, you're going to have to fix this. Can I help? You know, cause I'm, I'm a little bit mature at, at my age, you know, for my age at those particular times, but I didn't know, you know, I just didn't know that we were about to come to the fate that we were coming to, you know, um, even with the events happening towards the end of that school year. Okay. So then I'm still in the fifth grade at the time. And, um, you know, I get to where, like, the tail end of that school year. So I'm, I think we are like, late May. Come home. Like I said, my mom wasn't coming home every night. So I would see, she would, she would make sure she came, you know, to see me after school every day. And she would come after my dad left for work every morning to see me off for school. This was every day without a day missing. Um, and so I, she, you know, wasn't, she, she wasn't living in the house not anymore she, it was just it was bad you know it was bad um it was bad you know um things had really started to take its course with the marriage and they were arguing a lot um you know, my dad you know just was going through a lot of different things mentally man he was drinking a lot you know um trying to numb everything that was going on and i come home from school one day man and um my mom's eye is like closed, black, not at all. I mean, just a huge, just black, you know. And um, 
No, she gave me like a story of like, like some young girls had jumped her or something, you know? And um, I was like, you know, just thinking, trying to envision that, you know, I didn't know what to think. Like I said, I'm 11, who knows? Um, I didn't think anything else at the time, but um, fast forward about three weeks, maybe a month later, we're in June now and I come home from school again and she's trying to hide like she's trying to keep me on the left side of her you know like as, as she's you know taking me in, into the house to open the door and I'm like why is she acting so funny and I kind of like lean over to, to check out the right side of her face and it, her jaw had to be broken I mean she it was like her jaw looked like it had fell inside of her skin. It was like hanging like that. And I was like, well, you know, I've never, you know, never seen this. I mean, 11 years old, I've never seen this out of my, out of my mom. I've never seen her in this condition, but I knew what was going on now without her telling me. So I was like, right. don't even say it. You know, I know what's happening. Don't even say it. And you know, who knew what, how to deal with that at that age, right, right. you know, um, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't know what to think. I really didn't know what to expect, you know, moving forward, you know, because right. at this time, you know, I, I just don't know. I know the world is crazy. I know, I know enough to know that violence happens. Right. And, you know, you go, you fast forward a couple months later, man. And um, so around this time, like, like, when you're going through all this, what does Trey do to numb the pain? What does he do to be able to uh, pers persevere through all of that as a young kid? At the time, you know, I'm, I'm playing ball, I'm playing football, but, you know, I'm not really playing. You know, I'm, I'm competitive, but I don't have that drive yet, you know, so I'm just, I'm still just having fun as a kid, you know, playing on, you know, somebody asks you, you don't, you don't say no play with a team at, at that age you're like okay I'll play right. that's normally the response of a kid at the time the parents wasn't so much involved in in regards to I got to talk to the coach I got you know you, you know you go and play and you just you know you tell your mom right. you're, okay I'm playing with the boys club you got a game today they don't come to, they wasn't going to games like that back then you know um you know the parents go to every game now right and under nine and under ten and under you know they you know we my parents wasn't coming to games like that. So, you know? I mean, did they ever get a chance to see you play, period? Yeah, so my mom, mom had come to a couple of games. I was playing with St. Luke's Church, uh, especially that summer. I was playing with St. Luke's Church on uh, East Capitol. If you know that big church right there on the right-hand side. Yeah, boy, I know exactly what I'm saying. Um, I, played, I played for that church. Um, and that's when I was kind of like, you know, noticing that I could play a little bit, you know? Okay. Um, I was, you know, play well. And, you know, the coaches liked me, my teammates liked me, you know, they respected me as a, as somebody who could play a little bit, you know. Okay. Um, but, you know, August 22nd, um, 1996, um, I'm, in, I'm in my grandmother's house. You know, this is a normal summer summer day for us, so we're just like chilling around. My, my uncle, who's only eight years older, he was like a big brother to me and my other cousin who lost his dad. Um, who also lived with my grandmother at the time. So now, how many people were staying with your grandmother at this time? You know? At that time, it was it was like a gang of us. Um, you know, you, it was like my, my aunt and her husband, Man. my other aunt and, and her husband, who had two children at the time. A six, me, my grandmother, my grandfather. Um, my uncle, my cousin, my uncle's girlfriend, and they just had a young child. So it was literally like, it was like 15, 16 of us at the time, at that time. And this is what, like a two, two, three bedroom? Four bedroom. Four bedroom. Okay. Yeah, four bedroom. Um, didn't seem like it was so crunched up though. You know, we didn't really have, you know, me and my, my cousin would like sleep on the couch, you know. And there's yeah. adults so they probably going in and out yeah, they got, they yeah, they, you know, got jobs they, yeah they got jobs it wasn't it didn't seem crowded you know my grandmother you know kind of laid a foundation that, that made things seem you know more easier to deal with gotcha um, you know so it wasn't it didn't seem so bad you know okay 
you know, when, when we went outside that door, that's when it got, you know, it got ugly, you know, as far as the things that was happening. But inside, man, you know, we always felt like, you know, um, like there was grace, you know, there was grace there um, because of what my grandmother had laid down for us. Um, so we're all just like, you know, kind of relaxing watching you know tv we used to watch all that stuff back then man when martin was, at, was first out you know we used to watch martin all the time we used to watch every friday all our friends would come over we watched yeah. death comedy jam you know what i'm saying we, you know, we would watch a lot of these shows that was coming on that people like are uh, raving about nowadays that right, don't right. even remember when it was actually out you know the classics so yeah we used to watch this stuff watch you know certain movies and, um, Friday and all you know all these type of stuff you know all these yeah. movies shows that used to come on back then uh -huh. and um, I can't tell you what we was watching this particular day you know, it was like like two three o'clock um, in the afternoon and my uncle and his friends his so the, you know they were me they were all uh, they were all like we were like sitting across the section of the couch so you know I'm at the edge Mike Hicks is beside me. James Brunson's beside him. Gotcha. Peyton is on the other side of the section, and my uncle had just got up to go get his son, who's my, you know, my little cousin. Um, and he's like, you know, he's that's 26 years ago, so he's 26 now. You know, he was a young, you know, like almost he wasn't even one yet. So mm -hmm. that'll tell you how young he was on this particular day. No doubt. And um, man, you know, I didn't, I didn't know, you know no no spirit or anybody could tell me what was about to happen in the next couple of minutes as my grandmother gets a call you know the phone rings and you can hear the phone ring and uh she lets out this like loud scream and i i thought she was laughing at a show because that you know she sounds the same she'll laugh at you know different shows she'll watch you know, murder she wrote in the heat of the night and all these shows she used to watch back then you know what i'm saying she wrote. Yeah, right and uh um she always watched game shows and right. little comedies and stuff like that i thought she was laughing and but mike could see through to her room that was sitting beside me mike was sitting beside me and he was like trey man you need to go check on your grandmother um, and i'm like no nah, she's cool man she you know just uh laughing you know watching the tv show said, it's all good he was like, nah, man, she's crying like crazy. You need to go, you need to go check on her. So I kind of like leaned towards Mike as I'm, you know, trying to look into, you know, mm -hmm. through the hallway. And uh, she, you know, she's crying her eyes out. And um, as I'm walking towards the uh, the room, she starts to yell my name. Trey, Trey, oh my goodness, Trey. She kept saying that, oh my goodness, Trey. And, and I'm like, you know, what? Like, what's wrong? And uh, all she said was, they found your mother. Uh, she didn't say she was she was dead or she didn't say anything, but I, of course, knew what that meant. And um, I was eating a, a, a piece of um, sweet potato pie at the time. And I, I haven't even had half of it yet. And I turned around as she said that and I threw it as hard as I could up against the wall. And I ran out, um, ran out the door. I remember opening the, uh, you know, the apartment door and just kind of like opening it as hard as I could, like slamming it into the wall. And we lived on the first floor, but there was like, don't you know how you come into a building, there might be steps to that first building door. Right. There was like a six, seven steps right there. I jumped those, pushed the, the building door open and I just took off and um when I look back on it it was you know God like opened his hands up for me and he and he, and he put his hands on me and he grabbed me because for the next seven eight seconds I don't know where I went because I don't remember running in that direction I just remember I blanked Blank told Where did you end up going? I ran. So when I came out, we lived on 14th Street. 14th Street is in front of us, but right. crossing 14th Street is crossing my body as I walk out. Saratoga Avenue is on my right. So when you run straight up the street, so there's like when you run right across the street from where we were, we were there's like 
uh, some grass and there used to be fences right there. So I couldn't run that way. So I kind of like curved off and kind of ran up Saratoga Avenue towards Montana. When I, when I came to, I was up the street and I was kind of, you know, um, I never cried. I never said anything. I didn't yell. Wow. I didn't scream. That whole time, I didn't say nothing because I, I even remember the older dudes looking at me. Like, you know, like, Trey, you know, what's wrong with him? Because, you know, if ain't nobody saying nothing, they're just running and looking. Right, right. Yeah. You don't know what's going on because yeah. I never did anything. And uh, I kind of, you know, I stopped. I just stopped. I was getting myself together. Just kind of like, oh, you know, because the world was spinning. So when I came to, I was, it was like this. And I saw, like, I saw the older guys. And I'm still trying to get myself together. Right. As I'm getting myself together, James Brunson, who was who was two seats away from me on the couch, he comes up behind me. Comes up behind me, grabs me, and he's like, you know, kind of gave me that that whole like, you know, concern speech. Like, man, Trey, you know, we got you, man. Don't worry about it. Keep your head up. We love you, man. I'm sorry, you know, just that whole spirit. And as we're walking back, that's when I really grasp, you know, my complete mindset and process what I just heard. Mm. And, and I'm thinking, okay, wow. was my first, the first thing that popped into my head. It was, wow. Did this really happen to her? You know? And I didn't did even know any, what happened. You had like any thoughts or any idea? Of what yeah. So as I'm walking, happened. I had no idea. So as I'm walking back, those are my questions. That's my first question to myself. Is she really gone? That was the first thing I said. And then it's crazy to me still, I'm 37 years old, this happened when I was 11. How in the world was my next question to myself, my next question? Because you you feel like you were searched for like, okay, what happened? Right. How did this happen? Who was involved? Where was she? My next question was, how do I make a proud of it? Wow. The very next question, how do I make her proud of me? And as I'm saying that to myself, mm. something tells me to look to the left. As I look to the left, there's a basketball court. And, wow. and, and something told me, that's, if you want to make her proud, you do this, you do that. And that became my real introduction into basketball. Mm. Because now, Every single day after that standpoint, after that day, I play basketball with a purpose. I had a huge purpose playing the game, right? So we'll talk about that later. But James takes me on back to my grandmother's house. I go back into my grandmother's room and I'm looking at her like, you know, um, what happened? You know, what happened? She said, he beat her to death. So she said, she said, he beat her to death. And I'm like, I'm, yeah. you know, my mind is racing now because I know my, her and my dad had problems, but I know she's dealing with this guy. I'm like, who? And did you ever see this guy again? I remember yeah. you told me that, you know, you saw him. I saw, him you know, multiple, saw him multiple times. I used to see him on my way to school. He was sitting in a great car on my way to school, probably waiting for me to go to school so he can go to my mom's house. But you haven't, you, you didn't really have like no relation with him. No, hell no. I hated him even before this, you know, like I, I knew he was trouble. Um, I didn't respect him. I remember like, be honest with you, I got like spit in his face one time. Mm. Like literally. Shit. Yeah, Cause I was, I was pissed off at the way things were going at home and I knew he was the you know he was more so the, the center of that right right you know, um, you know I, I didn't see my mom and dad fight that much before he came into our lives you know and for this to be happening and they're arguing she's not coming home you know you're the center of this like I got no respect for you so how, I did, did, he end up, how did he end up catching this guy he turned himself in after a couple of days okay yeah, she was found in an abandoned house on 48th place 
no fees. So oh. you ordered there to, to, to do that or? Man, man, they were like staying in places like this, you know, staying in places, you know, just, you know, they were on drugs, you know, um, they were using drugs. Uh, I'm pretty sure they were high at this particular time because he beat my mom down and she didn't die right away. You know, um, he cracked her skull and shattered her cheekbone. Um, which was probably already broken from the time that he hit her before. So he ended up shattering the entire side of her face. Now, when that happened, when you saw your mom, um, you know, when when her jaw was broken before, did you have like any idea? I knew that like, it had to be him. Like, did you know that? Did you feel like had a had never an And she never said that, but I knew it was him. You know, and did you I see knew. him again after that? I don't think I did. Uh, I don't think I did. Nope. So I'm fast not, forward, what, 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 um, you know, what type of a sentence did he get? You know, what, what was he charged with or convicted? To be honest with you, I don't know the exact charge because he 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 got 15 in life and this guy's out. He did- Are you uh, serious? Yeah, absolutely. Last, the last thing I heard of him was that he was, um, he was in like a shelter somewhere here in DC. I wanna talk about that later. Let's, let's, let's fast forward, man. So, um, you know, you, you just lost your mom. You mm -hmm. know, say now you 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 you're focusing on basketball. You know, prior to you, um, this 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 tragedy, was there anything within yourself, man, where you felt like you know I could, I can do this basketball thing? Like I'm 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 pretty good. Like did have any? Did anybody ever tell yeah, you? Like, yeah, prior to like like you pretty good, right? Like you got you can go places with this thing. Mm -mm. Not a person. Mm. My, my drive after that was different. I was a totally different person within five minutes. So talk about that. Talk about that drive, man. What did, what did Trey Kelly do, you know, to, to separate himself from everybody else, man? Because what I remember <laughs> when I watched you play, man, it's 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 like something I, I haven't seen since, man. It's it's like a lightning in the bottle, man. And I haven't mm. really seen that since, man, as far as being a, a, a point guard. It so what made what was the you know how did you hone in on on your ability and what was some of the regiments some of the things that you did to make yourself this this phenomenal player and i'm so sorry. early on <laughs> early on right after this you know when i i guess you know the next time that i stepped on the basketball court was different than the time before talk about that um so the summer the summer leagues were pretty much over like the boys and girls club leagues were over by the time she passed because it was august we we're about to go into school. And um, I transferred schools from Aton Elementary in Northeast to Slow Elementary, which is now uh, Murray McLeod Bethune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in, 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 on the other side of Northeast. Mm -hmm. And I played for Slow at the time. And I remember just, it was just different. Um, and the regiment was just playing as much basketball as I could. Like I was just playing, I was just going outside. I was playing against my friends. Right. Any any little, you know, maybe tournament that was going on that I could, you know, get on and get on the team, I was playing. But it was about my mindset, you know, right. what, when I was playing. Um, Cause I was, man, after, you know, her funeral and everything, um, I had a I had a long time to just process everything that was going on, and this this started um, a very dark time for me as a person, you know. So take away basketball, I was in the dark. You know, I was in the dark. I was I was um, I started experiencing um, sleepless nights. Like I could not sleep, man. It took me. You know, to just really feel like, okay, I'm going to sleep and I'm going to lay down and I feel peaceful. It was years. Right. It was it was a couple of years, um, and you know, going through that, and and I'm also experiencing other deaths. You know, just in the neighborhood, in the neighborhood yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know how that goes, and it's just tough to try to get through this, and you got to go through everything else, um, and you know, I used to, you know, just was I was petrified in the center you know i was sleeping with the lights on and mm. I, I was taking showers with the curtain open never closed the curtains something about me just thinking like if i go to sleep she gonna be there there's no because i'm at one point i was like man yeah of course i was a realist 
and I wasn't saying this to myself and like going crazy or anything, but I wasn't like I didn't. I was like, man, there's no way she could be away. There's no right, way she could right, she right. could have died. I didn't right. go and have that closure with her because I told them to close the casket before I came in. Okay. Because I envision, okay, they're telling me she got beaten to death and right. skull was cracked and her face was shattered. I don't want to see that. I don't know what that looks like. So I don't even want to see that. Close the casket before I come in. And they did that. I saw a glimpse of her because when I kept, when I was about to walk in, it was still open. And you can see my uncle. It's like, no, hurry up and close it. You know, Trey's, Trey's walking in. Now, how, how old was she when she, you know? When... Um, my mom was 37. And same age you are now. Yeah. 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 yeah 37, 96 would have made a, I'm sorry, 39. Okay. 39. Now you had, um, did your mom have any other kids? Um, you know, you had any like siblings or were you? Were you story about that. Um, my mom had about 10 miscarriages and wow. she had a, a son who was born after me in 94. My little brother um, didn't make it out of the hospital. He was he was only like 13 days old, born premature as I was. I was born a few months early. Okay. And he didn't make it. Um, and I was, you know, I became her only, I was our only child by the time. Wow. So. Um, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, that's, 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 that's crazy. So I wanna, I wanna fast forward a little bit, man. Um, I know that, um, you know, I was talking with you, you know, um, when we was doing a photo show and I, I never knew this, man, but I never, um, you went to a, uh, a school on the other side of town, you know, being that you, you know, you're living here in Northeast, but you went to a school that's way out of the way. So, you know, what led you from going to a school that's, you know, way outside of your neighborhood, you know, talk about that a little bit. Um, that was actually that, that helped me, you know, um, I went to Alice Dill junior high school. Um, as a seventh grader and an eighth grader, um, after going to slow, I had a, I had a great season um, individually. You know, we lost, I think, in the semifinals okay. with Scott Montgomery Elementary School. Um, but it was, it was that that season helped me understand that I could play the game. That I was, you know, like I told you, my my mindset was different. I'm going right at dudes. Um, um, you know, I'm doing things in elementary school that, you know, a few straight, like three or four straight 20 point games, which mm. you know, they wasn't really seeing like that at that time. Right, right, right. And, um, you know, it was, it was giving me confidence that, you know, I can go and play against anybody. And, you know, it was just like, that was the drive. That was the approach. That was, you know, something that was helping me mentally kind of get through what I was going through, you know? And um, I go to Alice Deal. Because I, you know, I heard about you know how good they were athletically, right? And I heard about the basketball team. I heard about um, Coach John Spearman at the time, and mm. you know he he was he was influential because he was he was a lot about discipline. Gotcha. Um, and you, you know, do you feel like you needed that at the time? Because you know, uh, listen cool. to you, you sound sound like you pretty. You was pretty a uh, you know pretty measured kid. You know, what I'm saying? at the time I was I was nuts. Okay. <laughs> I was I was nothing. And I was, you know, I was had a lot of spazzing out. Uh, even though I was playing well, I'm you know, I'm fucking going crazy. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm you know, um I'm, I'm not disrespectful at the time, but you know, I'm really just passionate. Yeah, that's understandable though, you know, yeah, going through, going through a lot. And, yeah. and it was, I was letting it out at times where I didn't I didn't yeah. plan on letting it out, you know. Okay. You know, maybe talking back a little bit to some coaches, and, you know, um, on the basketball court in my neighborhood, just trying to hold my own, and, you gotcha. know, maybe getting into fights and, you know, stuff like that. Um, I wasn't in trouble, you know, just looking back on it, I wasn't, you know, I didn't didn't think, you know, I, that I was going down a bad path or anything. Gotcha. I was just letting that rage out. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember a guy um, telling me, you know, once I did, you know, go pro and everything, that, man, I thought your attitude was going to be in the way, you know. So mm -hmm. he remembers that time, you know, where I was just like, you know, I was going through a lot. And he probably just in the neighborhood didn't really know what I was going through. I was just about to ask, did he, did he, 
A lot of right. people didn't really know what was happening like that. You know, they didn't. Oh, know. Did you disclose any of that to anybody? Because that's a lot. Yeah, if you really didn't, know, to, to, yeah, if you didn't, if you didn't know, you just didn't know. You know, my it. friends knew and the guys who I played ball with. Because I used to hate, like you know, back then, you know, you joining on your your your, your, your peers and. You know, oh yeah, kids was back like, then, man. They was they was like, ruthless, man. Your mama <laughs> jokes. I, I I nipped all that in the bud quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. we ain't gonna do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they knew from that. A lot of the introduction. There's a, there's a certain baseline. That yeah. They, so a lot yeah. of the introduction to my friends, in regards to okay, his, mo- his mother's not here. Was that like, oh, your mother? This nah, man. We can't, you know, we can't talk about that. Right. Got you. We've been going all day, but we, we ain't gonna go there. Oh man. So, I got you. Um, but other than that, you know, like the older guys, and like some of the people who you know like just used to be around the basketball court. You know, they probably didn't know much. You know. Um, Cause I wasn't, I didn't look like I was about to be a kid that was going to go to the streets or anything. Right. You know, so they, they probably just didn't ask. Um, over the years, I would have some of the younger guys that, that grew up under me in my neighborhood. You know, they used to ask people like, you know, why like, Trey plays a certain, he's different. He plays a certain way. <laughs> something like something. So what's going on with Right, him? right, right. Maybe the introduction of, man, because my yeah, cousin yeah. would tell people like, man, you know, Slim, so I'm a little different, man. You know, like, he lost his mom, man. And he just, every time he go out there, he trying to go out there to do something, you know? Mm-hmm. And that was just what it was on the inside of me. It was just, I, I was just trying to make it happen, man. Um, started early with just wanting to go to the next level, play junior high school ball. And as I'm, the more I was playing, the more that I was gaining confidence in myself to know, you know I could play with anybody, you know? Um, I was playing up. And some of the club ball, you know, like I, you know, I was like twelve, playing fifteen and under, mm. but still being able to hold my own. Thirteen, right. playing sixteen, seventeen and under, and you know, it was something that really just like helped me through. Now, Trey, you know, like a lot of people who who um, may not be familiar with Washington D.C., man, the different, you know, how um, territorial our city is, man. You know, when you think of like. Saratoga, Montana, that whole Brentwood, that whole, just that whole time period of Washington, D.C. You know, what kept you out of the streets? What kept you from wanting to, you know, continue to focus on this talent that you had and, you know, not go down that path that you've seen a lot of other people uh, going? The game. The game. The game kept me busy. It kept me. It, was it ever tempt, like tempting? Like, did you ever, did you ever have like certain temptations? Like, because you know, nigga, you know, I wanted to hurt. They get easy money. I wanted, I wanted to hurt somebody, man. Like to be honest with you, because I was, I was, yeah, 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 they don't hurt me, right? You know? So I'm, I'm like, man, you know, there was times where I was just like, man, whatever, right, right. You know, you know when I got older, and my friends started kind of going out there, but I, but I was, I was just smart enough, man, to just like, okay, I, that ain't me. Right. You know, that ain't me. So what I developed was like, you know, this this I don't know how this would sound, but that gangster shit that people had out in the streets, I was taking that to the court. Oh, basketball court, yeah, yeah. That was my beat. That was my <laughs> yeah. now, you know what I'm saying? And it was, man. I think, I'm like, laughing because I, I watching you play man, I, I, I was I, I see it. I saw it. Was, I saw it was, it was like it was it was literally <laughs> like because I'm just like I mean, you know, I'm 14, 15, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm like, kill this you know like i'm going at this dude yeah wanna, yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna like not even embarrass him but i'm like i'm gonna win tonight right right you know i'm going i'm gonna win tonight you know what it i'm saying fire, man it was a, it yeah was a, and, and, and and that desire that i had man i'm glad that i was able to to channel it that way mm. took me some time to get rid of like the attitude part and just like this the, the spunkiness that i had you know and um you know, toned it down into yeah. the channel it on the court. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew I, you know, I mean, uh, anybody could go out on the streets when you you lived in this place. Right. You, know, you can go and do whatever, but it's just, it's just gonna get you in trouble. No doubt. You gonna end up in a place. And I used to tell myself, I used to tell myself, and I used to tell my friends, I was like, you know, I just don't want my story to be, you know, he went and robbed, he went and killed, he went and did this because his mom. Right. You know, I wanted it to be, man, this dude shine because of that. Oh, this yeah. dude oh, went, and, and went after, he went and yeah. succeeded in spite of that, you know? And that's that's why I used to tell myself, man, I was, I was, I'm, 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 I'm proud that God was able to put his hands on me in that way 
for me to even think that way. No doubt. I'm glad God put his hands on me to even run the way that I ran when I ran out that door that day. Mm. You know, I could have ran left and not yeah. even thought about the basketball. Right, court. right. You know right. what I'm saying? I, I mean, yeah. he took me there. Yeah. You know, he took yeah. me there. And it was something that, you know, changed my life forever. So, you know, um, the, the skill set and everything just started just taking its course. Um, you know, working hard, getting up extra shots, man, just playing a lot of different basketball all over the place, playing with all these different teams. And, you know, it was just like, I always had something to prove. I never went out there and was just like, I don't feel like it today. I don't got it today. It was like every time I was sticking my chest out, you know? Talk about your skill set, you know, um, being a young kid, you know, was it who took you under their wing as far as like helping you develop your, your, your skill set? Because again, you had a you 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 have a unique skill set being a point guard who can score, but you can get you know you can pretty much get your shot up shot off you know pretty much from anywhere right you know but you can also you know dish the ball. Mm -hmm. So again, talk about your skill set and who, who you know who who uh you know took you so, under their wing. To, to, so I, to I was way. playing I was playing at the time a little bit after you know my mom passed. I was playing with a dude named um, we call him Boo Boo Boykins. Um, and he had like a YBOA team that he had sponsored, um, the Panthers, like the Bowie Panthers or something like that. I knew him because he was from Brentwood, but he had started, you know, he was living out there. He had got married and was living out in Bowie. So he called the team the Bowie Panthers. You know, he used to take us to these different um, tournaments and all of that. And he ended up having a conversation. Uh, you know, I was probably like 11, in the end of 11, going into 12 with um, the last Taylor, who we call uh, Peanut. And he was basically telling Peanut that, you know, this is a kid that I think would do you would do justice having a relationship with. Gotcha. Um, who needs what you have to give? I don't think I can give that to him. So I met, I met Nut uh, when I was like 11, maybe 12 years old. And he just had like this pro mentality when it came to basketball. He had played a little bit in the NBA. Um, when you look his name up, he's, you know, and go around town and ask about him. A lot of those older guys consider him one of the best players they've seen that come through this town. So he was giving me that. He was like that John Battle crew. Like he was a little older than John Battle. He trained. John Battle went to uh, McKinley, right? Went to McKinley, played with um, the Hawks and the Cavaliers for yeah. years. He was like running up for six man of the year a few times. So Nut would just take me to the gym. Um, he taught me how to shoot the ball. Mm. Um, you know, he would tell me different things. Um, he would develop me like on a day to day basis. Like if he came to a game, he would tell me, you know, different holes that I had. And it just helped me so much, man. Um, and that was that was um, helping me propel my mind, you know, in regards to the game of basketball, even in life, because he gave me a lot of those lessons, too. Gotcha. So when I met him, you know, that was the polishing part of my game that I needed. That was the polishing part of, of the IQ part of mm. basketball that I needed. Gotcha. And it was helping me, you know, extremely. And I was, you know, I needed that at that time. And I'm glad that I was able to meet him. You know, it was a couple of people in my life at the time, other than my father, that was like an extension of my dad. Okay. Um, um, just like, that. you know, another guy who didn't even really play ball was Kurt Bone, you know, the all days CEO. Shout out to Kurt Bone, man. Got an yeah. interview with him coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, one, you know, yeah. one of the one of the most influential people in my life. You know, I Shout met him when I was in the ninth grade. Gotcha. And just, I mean, got gems from him by the day. You know, no, different no. things. And he was open with me about his life and his past and, you know, and what he had been through, you know, in the 80s and the, yeah. and the cocaine era and everything. And, you know, his run-ins with the law, uh, you know, just how he come up. And I mean, one of the smartest, savvy dudes that you would ever meet. And just imagine getting that every single day. Man. You know, I mean, he would drop me off. He would come to a Dunbar game, right? Drop me off, um, to, you know, take me home, drop me off at my grandmother's house. And we're like, we're on, we on Saratoga Avenue. Like, mm. we, we think it happened. We, we'll sit out there for like two and a half hours and just yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. You know, after the game, it's like 10 o'clock. So you think if I'm like 10, it'd be like one o'clock sometime. 
I'll be going in the house and I'm and when he pull off, I'm like trying to carry him get in the house. You don't know what's happening. You know what I'm saying? So right, right, right. You know, just that relationship, you know, with him and um, with, with, with guys like Peanut, you know, was just was just huge, you know, in, in, in my life and in my, gotcha. my my grooming process. Okay, okay. So you had you had a pretty good, uh, well, you had a pretty excellent career at, uh, at uh, Alice Dale. Um, but what led you to go to, uh, you know, um, to Dunbar High School? You know, because again, you yeah. know, Dunbar. A lot of people who, to the people who's not familiar, Dunbar, one of the most prominent uh, institutions in, in Washington D.C. Man. So, were you were you familiar about the history of Dunbar? And, and again, what what led you to? Go I didn't Dunbar? know much about the history, to be honest with you. Um, okay. You know, I used to turn on DC twenty eight and kind of see some of the games. DC twenty eight, shit, yeah. <laughs> man, I ain't heard that in years, man. Yeah. I turn on DC twenty eight. I would more so yeah. see Coolidge. Um, that the, the dude who came up behind me after my mom passed, James Brunson, I was telling you about, he played for Wilson, so I went to a couple of games to yeah. see him because him and my uncle were like best friends. Okay. But we had went to a couple of games, um, see him play at Wilson. Um, you know, but I hadn't seen Dunbar yet until after my eighth grade year at Deal. So I go to the MCI Center, which was the MCI Center at the time, Mm -hmm. um, to see Dunbar play Gonzaga in the city championship game. Yeah, city championship, yes, sir. We won by like two points. Like, if I'm not mistaken, I think the score was like 47 yeah. 45 or something like that. That was a good game, yeah. And um, uh, Bernard Robinson hit the layup to win the game. Mm -hmm. And I saw them celebrating, you know. And I was just like, damn, you know, I, I want to be a part of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, I want to. And the dude that I was with, he was like a roving leader. I can't even tell you this guy's name, to be honest with you, which is crazy. Because I didn't even know him like that. He was yeah. just, you know, he's just like, man, you want to go to the game? And he took me to the game. Right, <laughs> like, right, right, right. I wanted to see some basketball. So um, he he overheard me sell myself that. Because I, okay. I, I was thinking out loud, basically. No doubt, no doubt. He was like, man, you want to go to Dunbar? I was like, yeah, man, I, you know, I want to go to Dunbar, man. Like, you know, he was like, okay, I know the coach, man. I'll just take you up there. Let him, you know, um, let him have a look at you. So, like, cool. Um, so, he uh, took me up to Dunbar, and there was a dude named uh, Musa Majid that used to play with Dunbar at the time. He was just in there with him. I remember him. And Gary Lampkins came in. That was my my first coach at Dunbar. He was like, you know, you know, just come up here and work out, you know. And um, he wasn't really saying that I can have a spot on the team. He just wanted to see me play a little bit. And I started playing. And he was like, and this, you know, this is this is ninth grade or it's ninth before, grade. This is like before my ninth grade year even started. Okay. okay. And then okay. I ended up I ended up going with Dunbar. Um, going to Dunbar. That was the first year that they started allowing the ninth graders to play varsity. Varsity. Okay. And um, you know that was a that was an experience for me, man. Because you know it was just like I'm just you know I'm not even on the scene yet. You know I'm one of the best junior high school players. I think I was ranked like number one, right. like number one or two okay. in, in junior high school at the time. They had started these rankings and you know, they was printing them out and you know you see it and everything. Right. Um, I mean, did you ever, whatever school, I mean, what school at the time did you ever think about going to? Because you know you got to, you, know, you, you, you got to go to high school. You yeah, to but I wasn't, but no, but, you know, junior high school had ninth grade. So in my mind, I was probably just going to go back to Deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when you was at Deal, would you ever think about like, I, never, I, never so about I really wasn't thinking about it. Okay. Gotcha. Um, my, a lot of my friends went to Spengon, so it was probably a small thought there. Right. But I thought, you know, Dunbar had the more structured program. Right, right, right. And they had just won, you know, city championship. I saw it with my own eyes, and it was just like, you know, I got that feeling to just want to go. And you know, Lampkins put me on the team, and you know, that ninth grade year was just like a coming out party. So your ninth grade year, you now were you a starter the ninth? Because I, I I don't remember you until your sophomore year. Yeah, so I, I wasn't starting. Um, Gary wanted like a, you know, I was coming in the game. I was trying to cross dudes up get to my floater, <laughs> you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a jump shooter yet. So I was right, just, right. Trying to, you know, get to my floater, get to my spin move, lay right, it up, right. a couple sweet passes. And, you know, you know how those older coaches are. He didn't really, 
it wasn't like he didn't really see that as a kid running his right. team yet, you know. So, so I can't bench, but you know, we like a couple of games into the season, and you no, know, I'm coming off the bench and we play HD Woodson mm -hmm. at Dunbar, and it was like a crazy game. Like everybody was there. Kurt Bone, that's we, that's when I first saw Kurt Bone. I haven't met him yet. I first saw Kurt Bone, Melvin Middleton, those old guys, all the Rayford Edmonds old dudes. They was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, DC Assault Crew, you know, AU team, you know, they were there. The whole city was out, you know, yeah. for, for this particular game. And you know, I just, I'm just like getting to, all, you know, getting in my bag a little bit. Uh, you know, layups here and there, a couple of little sweet moves. And then, you know, I grabbed the ball at like the, uh, the elbow, like jab step a dude, jab step again, but I go left. Oh, okay. God. And I take two dribbles. Big Antoine uh, Miller, who played at HD, came. Dude was still on my hip. Mm. Antoine came, and I spent right between them, okay. between both of them. And when I spin, yeah. you know, when I turned around, it was like nobody did. And I'm just <laughs> like, at the rim by myself. So yeah. I laid, man, you know, people came on the court. Like, <laughs> they came on the court. Like, some people grabbed me. I'm just yeah. People like, you know, just slapping me, like, you know, yeah. you know, on my back, like on my arm and everything. And I was like, you know, yeah, here, here I go. Right, it, right, right. Like one of those moments, like, here, you know, here, I'm here, basically. So that was that that was the moment right there. Oh, so, yeah, that was it. Like, I'm, you know, I'm here, man. I'm here and I, you know, kind of hit the stage type of thing. <laughs> now, did you did you become a starter, you know, uh, later during not, that period? No, I did not. I just had those kind of games. Okay. He really didn't let me off like that. You know, I was just getting off kind of like by default in a sense because I was just I was I was ahead of my time. Right. We played HD Woodson again in the semifinals to get to the championship at Coolidge. I got twenty four. Mm. I, I lead the team in scoring. Lead the game off in the pitch. Yeah, off the bench. You That's know, crazy. And, um, it was just one of those things. You know, we we end up losing in the championship game, and you know, uh, but you know, the city was on notice. Okay. You know, that, that I had arrived and and I am thinking that to myself. And I you know, I am sticking my chest out a little bit. <laughs> you know, I'm like top twenty five in the country. Yeah. I'm out with the rankings and yeah. you know, it was just like, you know, I'm I'm yeah. I'm hitting the man and I'm you know, but I'm still, you know, it wasn't like I was, you know, listening to the hype and then I was I was ready for next year already. Yeah. So you know, talking, let's 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 get into that. Okay, this yeah. is what I when I took note of this is when I started to realize like, man, this 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 kid nice. Right. Um what was the transition like? What, you know, what changed from your ninth grade to tenth grade? You know, what really made it all come together, man? Because from <laughs> it was just phenomenal, man. Seeing the tenth grade, I, I I can't remember seeing a tenth grader play like that. Last tenth grade I remember playing like that was when I was in school. Was probably Derek Payne, right? And um, but he was a bigger guy. Yeah, I've never sure. seen a a, a sure. guard your height. Yeah score the way that can be able to get to wherever he want on a court like that man so talk about that transition man from ninth to uh, tip grade um so i got out of exposure that summer I, I started playing with dc assault um that was basically like my first summer with them okay so i'm going all over the country playing ball um you know we're like in um go to villanova um we had the charlie weber at maryland university okay um we had the big time tournament in uh, vegas Mm. I've tournament in, um, I think it was like Pump and Run or something like that in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, I went to ABCD basketball camp for the first time. Now, who were some of the guys that you was playing, you know, playing against, man? You, oh, really? A lot of people don't know, man, DC DC Assault is a big deal. If you're not that from is, this area. You know, all, like all pros, like, you know, yeah. like when I first saw LeBron. Okay. Um, Carmelo was on the circuit. Cause, you know, um, I believe LeBron came out. You're, 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 right? Yeah. We all, we okay. all came out in 2003. Okay. Of course, when they first named him number one, I was about twenty five with that same group. Like, hell yeah. Yeah. So it was like, you know, um, we even like talked a little bit, you know, like when we was at the camp and everything, and you know, because they like, you know, you kind of respect like your your peers, especially okay. he's like number one. I'm like the only, I'm the shortest dude in the top twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like six eight, six nine, six right, seven. Right, right. So you know, we would talk a little bit, you know. Um, uh, uh, Glenn, Big Baby Davis, Big, da Big Baby, um, uh, Raymond Felton, Anthony Robeson. I don't know if you remember him. I remember Anthony Robeson, man, that went to Florida. That was yeah. like 
he was lights out. Yeah, yeah. Crazy from from Saginaw, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, what's the kid's name? Uh, Sean Livingston. Um, Dockery that went to. Sean Livingston. So he had a nice, he had a nice little career. Yeah, there, man. Sean Livingston. I mean, Dockery that went to uh, Sean Dockery that went to Duke. Okay. You know, all these guys were on the circuit that I was playing mm. with. So, um, what's the kid's name? He came. He came to ABCD camp as like a seventh grader, eighth grader. Uh, mm. Sebastian Telfair. Woo! He, he was. He, he, uh, he, he went was straight like, to the league. Yeah, he was like seventh grade or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. he, he <laughs> like it was just like hype pumping uh, him. Up. So Tony crazy. Allen. Yeah, so you know, I was just like, you know, getting a lot of exposure. So when I came back to Dunbar that, that 10th grade year, I had just come from a great summer. Like the end mm. of the summer landed me in Los Angeles working out with Damar Johnson and Kenya Martin. Yeah. So I'm working out every day with them. They had just yeah. got drafted. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, man, Damar used to like, you know, give me he used to like he used to wear like uh the flight posits. Yeah. Give me like five, six pairs and join. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what's <laughs> up. Like in LA, you know, yeah. man. Even like they took me out to like the club and everything. Um, I used to see, I saw Busta Rhymes, Holly Berry. All <laughs> man. I'm in, I'm in you were 10th grade, man. I'm about my age. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man. So it probably wasn't the exposure that I needed. Yeah, I'm about to say, man. That, like, you know, there yeah, wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, I'm out with these dudes. They wasn't the best role models, yeah. I had to feel like a young lady that I went to Syracuse at 22 <laughs> years old. I was like 15, man. The hell you know, nah. <laughs> man, you, you, was, you was living a so grown man was, life, man. Yeah, that was a great Oh, you was also real rock star yeah. shit, man. Yeah, because Kiki Vandaway was working them dudes out. Okay. He was like the guru workout guy at the time. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, I'm getting that. You know, I'm working out with them dudes, you know, gaining some mm, stuff. Like that was it starting to all yeah. come together. Now yeah. I'm, I'm seeing, yeah, I'm so seeing where, 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 yeah. The 10th grade is like, you know, um, and I actually didn't, like, I actually did not start that season the way I wanted to. Okay. You know, it was something I was, you know, kind of tugging a little bit with the coach. Now, who was the, what, um, who was uh, the coach who won the, the championship? Was he still there? Yeah, my tenth grade year he was. Okay, yeah. Because I know he eventually, you know, he he, he eventually leave left. He left. And, yeah. and coach wrote now, uh, not to you know, if you don't feel like going to detail, but what what happened with that? Like, why did he end up leaving? And coach wrote because he, he won a championship. Like a couple he, had years. A of, he had a lot of personal issues with people in the building. They didn't get along with him. Um, that the way we lost my tenth grade year kind of left a bad taste in a lot of because the alumni were still involved with the school. Yeah, but he just won a championship like yeah, but years ago. The way we lost that 10th grade year kind of left a bad taste in their mouth. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, we lost the ninth so we were two years removed from the championship that they won. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know they Damn don't buy you man. Y'all tough man. <laughs> Yo, you actually had, tough. You had some tough seasons to begin before yeah. that championship team. Yeah. So he had like four or five seasons where they didn't even go to the championship. Yeah, yeah. And then they won. Yeah, I mean, when I when I was in school, man, when I was, yeah, they wasn't. Yeah, they wasn't that tough. Yeah, <laughs> that, like they're like ninety four through like yeah. ninety eight. Yeah. They really wasn't getting it done like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So I think they used they had, that. Uh, Lomax and, and Chase and all them guys. Yeah, yeah, they they used that against them and kind of like they, you know fizzled them out. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. Fifth grade year was, you know, pretty good for me. I, I turned it up like mid-season. Um, I was like 21, like maybe like six assists a game uh, my sophomore year. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, um, here we go. 11th grade year. Yeah. 11th grade year, man. You turn it up again. You do, I mean, what, uh, Coach Roach, he comes into the picture. Right. Now talk about the, you know, what was the difference between uh, uh, Coach Coach Lampton, right? Mm -hmm. And Coach Roach, you know, Coach Roach, I know he's a younger coach, but, you know, just yeah. talk about what was the difference between their the coaching styles and uh, your um, your role on the, on, on the team, you know, did your role change as far as, you know, being this- It changed a bit. It's poor leader, bit. What, or what? My role changed a bit. It was still kind of the same because you know, I was the lead guard. I was the guy gotcha. who was making the plays and everything. But what happened when Roach came, him being such a younger guy, it gave me, it gave me a better chance to have a friendship with him. Okay. You know, Lampkins being an older guy, it was like, 
you know, and, and you know, you you, you got to have some some sense of control as a coach. Gotcha. You no, know, but I thought he wanted too much. You know, it's just instead of letting us go out there and play, we had a great, great basketball team my tenth grade year, and we blew it. Right. You know, we blew it, and um, we blew it up fifteen against Woodson in the playoffs mm. and lose. You know, um, I'm talking about up fifteen in the fourth, mm. and lose that game. Um, and I'm not going to say what he did during that game, but he he didn't help us win that game. You know, and uh, we lost. Um, and a lot of it was on us, you know, because you just don't lose up 15 in the playoffs. Right. You know, but, you know, so there were some circumstances about that game where it was just, it made it tough for us to win it. Um, yeah. When Rope came, it was like, he was on some stuff like, man, I want to I wanna see this kid succeed. You know, he respected the fact that I wanted to stay at Dunbar because all the stuff that I was doing across the country, you know, the Oak Hills, and all these other two prep schools and Episcopal and all these schools mm. wanted me to come and play. Oh shit! And I had a meeting with him. Like, look, man, you know, I'm gonna be a part of this thing up here. You know, I see what's in the rafters, man. I'm trying to put banners up there myself. Mm. And championship. You know, I want my name up there. Yeah, he's a he's alumni as well. Bro. Yeah. You know, he played there, won championships. Like I think he won every year. He was yeah, he's up there. I think with Michael Michael Smith was up there. Okay. Yeah. He won two out of three. No, he, he came out the mic. Okay, my bad. Mike left like 89, 90. He came okay. in. Yeah, and he and he was just like, he wanted me to succeed, man. So he was just like, I remember one game, man, we played, it was my 11th grade year. And Talk about 11th grade year, man. Yeah, we were out Douglas. We were out Douglas. <laughs> Baltimore, where it's just crazy environment. You know, these dudes, they talking crazy. The fans, and he stopped coaching. He literally, he stopped coaching. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What you mean he stopped coaching? He stopped right? coaching and said, y'all line up across the baseline, Trey, get the ball, and go to work. Make your business, <laughs> your business personal. Go at these people. Man. I have that tape, and I watched that tape. Oh, God. I don't man. remember the game, so it was a heckler behind him. A yeah. dude that was talking about the other guard. That played uh, on that team. Yeah, he, was, yeah. he was nice. Tyler gotcha. Smith, guy named Tyler Smith. He was nice. I love this game. Um, but I'm going at him, you know. And Roach is like talking back to the dude every time I score. Like, what you say? <laughs> I heard one time, like, what you say, huh? Yeah. He came up with my young. <laughs> and he he stopped coaching. Yeah, yeah. The only coach during the time I was with him, man, this we need to do more so on the defense and on the offensive man. Right. He's like, look. Man, just go get these people. I mm -hmm. got I had 41 points, 15 assists that night. Shit. You know, just one of my games. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but the the game that really allowed me to really spread my wings was the third game of the season against Eastern. Okay. And they're beating us. They're beating us through like three quarters. And like I'm just I'm just playing. I'm just, you know. I remember hyper extending my knee a little bit that game. I set off from a couple possessions, came back in. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I know I'm having a good game, you know. Uh, we end up coming back, coming back to beat them. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, me and, my, me and my boy, Daniel Battle, we used to go, he used to pick me up. Um, his dad had bought him a car. He used to pick me up. We used to go to McDonald's yeah. every morning, pick up the paper. You know, we wanted to see our names in this box. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to do that back then. Yeah. You know, they could just you know, do that. Wa you know, Washington Post. Yeah, so we used to pick up the Post. I pick up, you know, we pick up the post, go to the sports page, we go right to our names, you know. It says Kelly, 45. Shit. Like, <laughs> I don't even remember having 45. <laughs> I'm like, no way. So I'm like, and he's driving at the time when I'm looking at him, I'm like, Slim, this joint say I got 45. Damn. And and he was like, Slim, you was cooking. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, I don't remember no 45, man. I got to watch this game again. So I remember after class was over, I go down in the locker room and just pop the tape in and mm -hmm. watch, count it every point. I, I had 45 tonight. Damn. But so it, <laughs> you know, understand shit. You get right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, man, I, I was I was busting off 40s like every couple games. After yeah, that. yeah. Back to backs, I had 50 that season. I mean, it was just one. Well, how, of how much you averaged that year? Because I know you you scored average. It seemed like it was going up every year. Yes, yeah, so I, I was twenty nine point seven. Your junior year? 
My junior year. Shit, I thought you averaged that your senior year. Nah. <laughs> yo, yo, you serious? I didn't know. Yeah. You. I thought yeah. you probably averaged like I don't know, maybe like 25, and, 26. And we had a blowout. We had a blowout, and we had a blowout and a game against Roosevelt that stopped me from getting averaging 30. Oh man, mm -hmm. that's crazy, man. So, so you know, your junior year, your name all met. You know, yeah. what was that like, man? Did you did you realize, like, man? I, I I'm, I'm, I'm one of the premier god not gods man but players in the city man because what i remember <laughs> i'm gonna let you answer that man go ahead <laughs> talk about that yeah. you know and, and i'm and i'm still i'm still like a hard worker at that you know at that time i never stopped working so gotcha. it was never like I, I feel like when you're not really working hard and you're just so talented you don't you don't really like you you go in like you know everything that's gonna happen okay you know? So I didn't, you know, I'm still, I mean, I know I'm the leading scorer in the city. I'm the number one player in the city. I got, I got, I got Gatorade player of the year for Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not, who knows if I'm going to get all mad or not. I don't right. know. Right, right. So, yeah, they called me. They got the call. got all mad. And it was like, <clears throat> you know, it was one of the things where it was just that, it was just a time, man. It was just, it was just all coming together. You know, for, so most, so more so for me, I was thinking more deeply than just being the best player. I'm thinking, man, shit, this, this, it's time to really get this thing going, man. I can, That's what I, I want to know. Yeah, I, yeah. Could, I could really do something to help my family. I could, yeah. you know, I'm thinking NBA. You know, right, I'm thinking right, everything right. at that point. I'm thinking big school, right? I'm thinking all of that, you know, and um. It was just like, like I said, it was just coming together. You know, all my, my vision for myself, it was all just coming together. It was like a surreal year for me. Just, you know, everybody wants to talk to me now. As far as like the press, um, Washington Post is coming. They talking to me every game. Mm. Um, um, the, the high school sports magazine, which was crazy back then yeah. you know, for everybody. I'm on the cover, mm. you know, so just things like that was just, just allowing me, man, to just feel good about myself, you know, while still putting in that work. Now, what was, what was, you know, like I say, you're killing it on the basketball court, but what was, you know, uh, home life? Did you, you know, did that change a little bit? Did you, you know, because a lot of times we hear stories, man, of great athletes, man, and who come from certain environments, right. the guys in the neighborhood, you know, they, they kind of look out for them. So what was that like going back to Northeast, you know, uh, after having these great games and people, Knowing who you are, you know the city. The city man was totally behind me. Yeah, and that that felt better than anything. I mean, like you know, to be honest with you, man, I could go walk through Trinidad or Berry Farm, Berry Farm, yeah, yeah, to see you know the young lady or something, man. Yeah, we all we yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you good, man? Everything. Yeah. Good. Let me know what's up with you. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? It was just that. What was that like, though? Like, because you, you know what I'm saying? This is new. You know what I'm Man, saying? Like, I, I was always on my toes. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still watch guys and watch people, you know. Yeah, because I was out of the mix. I really wasn't, you know, okay. I really out there like that. You know, I was, um, I did like the go go. You know, I loved it. You know, like, we, you know, where we should go, we should be in the icebox with the black hole, what? Nah, so that was a little bit before me. So, we was going to the mat. The mat, oh, back, back then, man. You know, I yeah. met him for the man. Big G called for me. Okay, like call. You know, he yeah, my, yeah. He said, man, I want to meet the kid, man. Yeah, and I, I came up there to the mat, man. This tall dude come out. You know, he used to wear the wife beaters all the time back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, he comes out, man. I'm, you know, and, and and at that time, you know, those guys were like, you know, bigger than life. You know, they yeah. were icons to us. And yeah. But to meet this dude, and he's like, man, what's up, Trey? And, you know, man, I you know, I saw you the other day at the such and such game. And, man, yeah. you doing your thing, man. You good with us anytime. You ain't never got to pay. Come in and see us, man. You good. I remember the, I remember the bouncers, like, put me out for walking on the stage one time. <laughs> this dude stopped the show and came out and, and grabbed me. Like, man, nah. Came back, man, took me back in. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, just, it was it was the support. You know, I, I look yeah. at that as support, you know. Nah, that's beautiful, man. You know, I that's look beautiful. at that as support. And this is it? once we get to the you know, we got a couple you got one more year to talk about and one more summer to talk about, but once we get to the South Carolina thing, I'm we'll gonna tell you another story about Big G that's deeper okay. than anything, you know what I'm saying? So no doubt. 
you know, it was just like, it was just that support, man, that I had, yeah. you know, um, you know, from the city, period, man. Kurt yeah. Bone, and, you know, just his influence on the city, mm -hmm. you know, being able to, you know, kind of let guys know I was his guy. No doubt. Know, and then I'm, you know, I'm from where I'm from, and they, you know, they like, look. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 no, nah, no, nah, we yeah they, you got they, if, if you're from here you if you know you know yeah, you like man, what's going on with slim man leave slim yeah. out of everything because my yeah. neighborhood was going crazy like beef yeah. and everything. like i was yeah, going yeah yeah on two three funerals every year when i was in high school so they ooh, these are killings you know yeah. so they i managed to stay out of all of that you know um i had one incident going into my freshman year of south carolina that summer you know that could have been fatal you know, but we're you know we'll talk about that when we get okay. to it. Okay. You know, it was just it was just you know one of those things, man. It was like you know they just really rally behind me, man. People were coming to the games like crazy, just yeah. packing the stands. I mean, I had a whole section, just my whole neighborhood. You know, yeah. that's what's up. I mean, that's what's up. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I'm listening, but I yeah. I seen it firsthand, man. Yeah. I, I saw it firsthand, man. Yeah. It was it was crazy. It felt yeah. really good. You know, yeah. it felt really good to be accepted. You know, um, you know, uh, by by the older guys, by your no peers, doubt. everything. No it just felt good, you know, felt good. No doubt, no doubt. So Trey, here we go, man. Like I said, man, you know, this this your senior year, yeah. and you know, like I want to know, man, like you go, we going, you going into your senior year. When did the letters start coming in? When did the recruitment start? Oh, the letters were crazy. In? The letters were crazy. So, man, I got to tell you a story that you probably never heard about my recruiting process. Uh oh, we got an exclusive. Let's go. And how that was derailed, like the, you know, they tried to take that thing away from me. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, so um, everybody was you know sending letters, man. I mean, since ninth grade, you know, since I first when oh, I you was getting letters in ninth grade. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Wow. I verbally committed to Syracuse in the tenth grade. So you was getting D one letters. Yeah, but I verbally committed. I thought I was going to Syracuse. I thought it was in tenth grade. Tenth grade. So. <laughs> That was it for me. I, I wasn't even really like I. I had I had letters that I didn't even open. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm thinking this is Syracuse. Like this, right. this is it. Like yeah, I go yeah. to Syracuse, man. This man, I go and put in work at Syracuse. I'm walking across the stage. Yeah. You know, and putting the hat on. That's what I'm thinking. Right. You right. know, but I'm playing with DC Assault. The heads of the organization, you know, they 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 came up with some methods to really try to control me. I'm talking about that. Um, you know, just trying to get me, like I said, I didn't go to Oak Hill. I didn't go to these schools that they wanted me to go to. And because I had, I, you know, I was, I was, I was backing myself. So they were trying to get you out of Dunbar to go to other yeah. schools? They were trying to get me to go to different schools. They were trying to get me to go to Oak Hill particularly. Well, why? What, what's the reason behind that? You, you, you know, two things. I mean, you, it, I mean, you're killing, you're already, you're doing your thing at Dunbar. You got the letters coming in. Thinking. I was the issue. Stuff like it doesn't matter. I'm playing with your team during the summertime. Yeah, I'm that notoriety. I'm top 25 in the country. So right, it right, 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 right. Where I go, I can stay yeah. at Dunbar and still do my thing. And still, exactly. And then I, I verbally committed to Syracuse. What are we talking about? Right. So we, we don't have to do any of that. So, from my standpoint, it was it was their method to try to control me once I was able to go pro. Mm. Looking for something in return, kind of like a what do you call it, like boosters, that kind of thing, you know. And for me, I'm just like I was. I was standing on my own too, you know. They didn't have to consult with my parents or none of that. I was answering my own questions when I went on my two visits, my college visit. I was by myself answering these questions from universities, right? You know, um, with pressure on me as a 17, 18 year old, and they didn't like that, you know. They didn't like that, and they felt they as wanted to have, they wanted to have have they more they uh, to have control of it, more of an input. And gotcha. That hurt me, you know. That hurt me because my last, even after uh, Syracuse was over, because he, you know, the, the head of DC Assault, he took that away from me, told them to back off me, because I'm. You got to think, I'm getting better as a basketball player. Right, right, right. I have no, not getting arrested. I don't smoke weed. I don't smoke or none of that. Right, so right, right. There's it, nothing, not, nothing floating around that says mm. so it's bad to deal with. Right, right. So he gets them to back away from me. But I still have UConn. If you go back and look at this, 
I got UConn, Miami, uh, Georgia Tech, West Virginia, and I think Wisconsin as okay. my as my five schools left. Also had as like a safety net in a sense, Georgetown and Maryland. Mm. I wasn't going to go to Georgetown. Big John wasn't there anymore. Merlin had Gary Williams, but Gary, when I talked to Gary, Gary wanted me to go to prep school first, and I just didn't believe in prep school or reclassifying and all that type of stuff. Why do you want you to go to prep school, though? Because they had a point guard there. He wanted me to come in and start, which I understood. They had a point guard that they, they was going to weed out. And they ended up doing that, if I'm not mistaken, but it didn't come until my sophomore year, okay. which would have been my freshman year. Okay. If I would have went to prep. Right. You know? So, you know, but who knows to believe in that, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, they didn't say sign a letter of intent. Now you're gonna, you know, you're gonna make sure you start. And they didn't say none of that, you know. So, um, that this is summer going into my so my senior year. So I, I make it to the ABCD basketball camp, and man, it was the best time that I had as an AU basketball player and it was the worst time at the same time what do you mean by the worst time explain i go in the, i go i go that summer to abcd camp top camp in america and i destroys it mm. i'm doing it you know like i'm getting it done every game who some of the guys that you, you was cooking against so that year was like those same guys that i that i, that I told you about i didn't get a chance to play against lebron in that in that camp but i played against lebron that summer and we beat them in Texas. Ooh. We beat LeBron. I had like the last 15 points of the game on my team. Okay. Like okay. just had like 25 and nine, but nobody talked about it mm. because, of, because of the juice that this dude had that ran yeah, over. They, So these teams really be having like that type it's of leverage. It's crazy, man. Do you think they, I, a lot of these school, these teams so still my, have this? My, like my problem with that is, is, is that you know, you did this to a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that was fighting for his life. You know what I'm saying? That was literally right. fighting for his life. You right. did this to a child, basically that's trying to make a way for himself and his family. But because you wasn't going to get nothing out of it, or you felt like you wasn't going to get anything out of it, you derailed my future. I had no idea shit like that. Now, you told me, you know, we had a personal conversation. If you don't mind me disclosing it. Absolutely. Um, you was you was telling me, you know, the gentleman, you know, he wanted to, wanted you to come stay with him. Yeah, and, um, and, 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 and 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 talk about that a little bit, you know, no, what like, stuff like that. Decision. Yeah, and, and down the road after that, that's what they that's what they did. I'm not going to name the guys who, right, right, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, like you know, as 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 real DC kids, we don't go for nothing like that. Yeah, you, know, nah, nah. you know what I'm saying? Like you could nah. go and live with it. And <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you know, you know, we we think funny stuff like that. Yeah, nah, we, 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 got, we got five hundred dollars for you and, and all this. We ain't we don't care we don't care about that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we just trying to play ball man and make a way for ourselves and our family, man. That's what that was yeah. about. Oh, no. and, you know, he it was just one of the things where they just they didn't treat that situation right. They didn't do right by me. Okay. Now you end up, like I said, man, somehow, some way, man, you end up, you know, getting the recognition and, 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 you know, getting the, get, you know, get, getting put in the, the best position that was conducive for you. So mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about that, man. What made you choose, you know, because again, you had a phenomenal year at Dunbar. You're seeing you now. I, I don't want to skim over this, but I want to ask. How many points did you average your senior year? Because you was you, you also was named. Uh, no, it only again. dropped like it only because we we added some good players, but it only dropped like point three, so like okay. 20, like twenty nine, okay, six or something like that. But you probably was more more efficient. Yeah, saying? yeah, more efficient that year. Um, I was crazy efficient that junior year too, though. Right, so right. Two really efficient years. Um, I moved a little bit more off the ball that year. Okay. Um, which you know, I just got easier points that year. Okay. You know, um, I played with a hell of a guy, um, one of my good friends, and I, he he's he's like Magic Johnson to me. You know, like just passing, know where to get the ball to, you know when. Um, so it was just easier. It was an easier thirty, <laughs> you know, mm. than you know than just you know. You was working. You was you was working for that thirty, but you you, you made it yeah. look effortless. Right, right. So. Um, 
just another great year, man. I was I repeat as all Matt and I repeat as the city's Gatorade player of the year. That's 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 a lot of people who, who like I say who's not familiar with our city. Being a repeat all Met, I could probably count on one hand, maybe two, yeah. of repeat all yeah. Mets. It's not it's that many. From DC public schools. It's it's hard, DC especially DC for DC public, public schools. We only had four, I think, in Dunbar history. Okay. And I was the first to do it at that time in like 13 years. Yeah, yeah. So the to 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 now people are were talking, I remember that year, they were talking more historically than anything. Mm. Um, and, and then I surpassed everybody who ever played in DC public schools in the scoring race. Nobody has scored more points than me by the time I left, which, which still stands. Wow. And, yeah, and that was, to even hear that, that at that time, and at, you know, after my senior year was over. I mean, so today, today you're still the all-time leading scorer at Dunbar High School? At, in DCIAA, period. Yo, that's crazy. And for the yeah. record, let's let's say that one more time for the yeah. record, man. You have the leading score in DCIAA history. That's amazing. Yeah, and that it was is, that's amazing. And you know, when you look at it, I mean, you got to think about even like the Kurt Smiths and those guys. They were like averaging like twenty, right? Twenty two, twenty. But then then their senior years, they were average like twenty six. Mm -hmm. You know, but for you know, I averaged 14 as a freshman, which gave me a little bit more points, you know, as a freshman, because I played right. for years. Right. But you talking about even a three-year span, I would have surpassed them. Right, you know, yeah, 21, yeah. 29, 29. No doubt, no doubt. That, that's that pretty was, much 30. That's pretty much 30 a game for two years in a row. That's crazy. What's happening? On top of 21 as a sophomore, which yeah. nobody was doing. <laughs> yeah. Like even, I said, man. That, nobody was doing. No doubt, no doubt. So, so, go ahead, my man. Yeah. So to be able to, to 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 for people to be, you know, mentioning my name like historically, even at that time I haven't even played a college game, it was it was amazing to me. And like I said, it just gave me, you know, a little bit more confidence, man. But I can be honest with you, I had to pick myself up from what happened the summer before with the, with the AAU stuff. Because that, you know, that hurt me, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. I went to the All-Star game at ABCD basketball camp. Mm -hmm. And the dude took me out to the All-Star game. Now, when you make this All-Star game, you Everybody are, is there to, sit, to watch, to see you guys. Yeah, because it's the top 20 players in the camp. Yeah, so school's so probably made, all yeah. over. Yeah, LeBron James is in this game. So, basically, what that would have done for me is make me a McDonald's All-American. Mm, that's a look. Without a doubt. Like I, by the time I got back to my grandmother's house, I would have been a McDonald's All American by far. That's crazy because all they would have did was check my stats at Dunbar, and I'm I probably led more people in scoring than that that was in that game. Okay, from the high school standpoint, nobody's getting thirty like that. No, Trey, did they have the, did it around that time? Because. Um... I'm, I'm trying to figure out, do they still have like the Capital Classic around that time? I played in the Capital Classic, but I played in the like the regional game. Mm. Yeah, which, how? <laughs> yeah, you should have been, yeah, because I know they used to have the regional and then they had like the, the national all over. Yeah, like how? You know, that doesn't yeah. even make sense. Do you think? Yeah. That has absolutely. something to do? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they took everything away from me from right, that right, right only reason I ended up at South Carolina is because they called my grandmother's house and I answered the phone. I was about to leave out and go outside and play basketball. If I wouldn't have answered that phone, they would have got back to them. They would have told them whatever they was telling these other schools. Damn. Them, for sure. They had that much pull. Oh, no, they had the, the, the pull. Now, do you feel like, you know, that, that situation, you know, probably had happened to other kids as well? Because it was, it was a lot of kids, man, that came out of the city that you know, played yeah. on these different teams, and, the, and then you, you the, ain't hear about them no more. The, the, the standing issue in most AAU basketball is like a lot of the better kids don't have their dads around. The guys who are really pushed to go to these different schools, they don't have their dads around. And that gives the coaches and the people with the pool 
the chance to bring those guys in, they're living with them. And all leverage. That. Yeah, they leverage that. They give, and they leverage that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you're talking about a kid who has gone through a whole lifetime at that point. Mm. From 18 at the time, who the fuck cares? Exactly. You take yeah. this one from me, okay, cool. Yeah, What's yeah. that? Yeah. You're talking about a kid who his mother, his mother, his mother passed away and his, and his second question to himself was, how do I make her proud of me? Mm. So this this wasn't going to kill me. Right, 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 right. I, yeah, I know God is in there. I know he's planning or something. I get the phone call from South Carolina. Yeah. Unfortunately and fortunately, because I, I had a great time there, I had no other choices as far as the bigger schools, because all the bigger schools have backed off of me. So I'm going to play in the SEC, I look at that, and I'm going to play for Dave Odom. He was at Wake Forest. Mm. It's a no-brainer. No doubt. It's not even. I don't even have to go on a visit to 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 commit. Okay. You can't. What was that like, man? You know, you stepping off. You you you, you stepping on campus, man. You know, you leaving the city. Like I said, you mean you you, you didn't travel. You know, with the uh, different AU teams and things mm -hmm. of that nature. But now, you know, this D one. This is this is this is the big this is the, the 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 big big stage, man. Right. What was it like, man? That first game, man, that you got to, you know, step foot on on, on that court in uh, South Carolina, man. What was that experience like? So I would take you back to a short story I, I told you about Big G. Okay. So the day that I was supposed to arrive in South Carolina, man, I had no ride. I had no money to get on the plane. Damn. I had no way in hell to get down there. The school ain't. They ain't finesse a little situation. None of, that. <laughs> None of that. So Oh man, come on, that's D one, man. It's D one. I call Big G and say, look, man, I ain't got no I need some money or something, man, to get on get down to the school. That's crazy. He said, young fella, man, give me fifteen minutes. You sound, like big, you sound like Big G too. <laughs> call, call my call my grandmother's house back. Well, maybe I can just hear him telling you that. Maybe that's just me. I can hear him telling you. Call that. my grandmother's house. 15 20 minutes yeah and like man you got your bags packed mm -hmm. man, we got the we got the we got the expedition loaded up we just gonna uh. drop down in him wincy sauce the old manager <laughs> oh, just name it. <laughs> they all took me down there man. oh man that's that's what's up that's what's up they all took me down there man yeah. like, first day i got down there probably i got there late i was supposed to get there like seven at night, I got down there like two in the morning. Why you didn't tell Coach Odom though? You ain't... No, I told him what was happening. I told him what was okay. happening. Okay, my bad, my bad. I mean, not not as far as like I couldn't get down there. I was, got you, got you. Know, you. I was just, at that time. I was just a kid that I used to try to handle stuff myself. Yeah. So that was just what that was, man. Um, you know, I do the same thing these days. Like I might be in something, I like, gotta handle something. I just no you know, do it myself. You know, no so. doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Um, so, um. To step down there, man, and to get on campus and, you know, that first game um, was, again, was like a coming out party, you know. Mm. It's, a, it's a southern place. They ain't really used to nobody. Long crossover. Yeah. Come down. And this, this is, uh, what, what we talking about? Um, Columbia, Columbia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Columbia. 2003. Okay. And, um, you know, you can hear the crowd. It's like, ooh, you know, just... Yeah, you know, like and and then yeah. love around the campus, you know, people kind of talking about you know the, the possibility that that team has. You know, we went to the NCAA tournament that year, yes. and um, you know, like I said, as a, as a as a player, um, I was just trying to fill it out. You know, mm -hmm. trying to fill it out. I started a lot of games that year, um, even in the SEC play. Okay. You know, against Florida, Vanderbilt, Kentucky. You mean against uh, uh, Joaquin Noah and the boys? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, my freshman year, they wasn't there yet. They were younger. Okay. They were younger guys. We played against them my junior year, I think. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, my. Yeah, time I mean, you I played like Mario Chalmers when he was a kid. You played against him, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was my senior year, though. Senior year. Okay. When they, when, they played, when they played with Kansas, they had a really good team. Um, but a lot of guys, man, came through that conference while I was there. 
you know, Ron, Ray John Rondo at Kentucky. Mm -hmm. In Kentucky. Yeah, Randolph Morris at Kentucky. Jody Meeks, who used to play with the Wizards and Lakers yeah, at Kentucky. Um, Joe Crawford was pretty good, pretty good at Kentucky. Then you go to LSU, man, in one year they had Brandon Bass on one block, Big Brandon Baby on the Bass. other. Block. Like that was, you know, we couldn't rebound against them. We had was to, Big Baby down there? Was he at, was he? Man, Big Baby was on the other block. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He, at that time, he was like 315, like yeah. a movie. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, you go to Florida. Yeah, that was that team with Joe Kim Noah, Corey Brewer, Tony Corey Brewer. Brewer. And I, I was trying to think of the guy who used to wear the, the headband. Yeah, Al Horford. Al Horford. Um, so they had they had a great, of course, they had a great team. The, the first year they won the national championship, we beat them twice during the regular season. Oh, man. We lost to them in the SEC championship game on the tipping. That's right. Joe Kim Noah tipping by two points. Man. Yeah, um, <laughs> Ronnie Brewer at Arkansas, Patrick Beverly at Arkansas. Patrick Beverly. Um, yeah. you, know, you had so many dudes just come through that conference that I had to play against night in, night out. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved it. You know, I yeah. couldn't wait to see these dudes. I couldn't wait. And, and my, more so my, my rivalry from a point guard standpoint, not even the team, was Rondo. Okay. You know, and um, I outplayed him, you know, most of the games that he, he outplayed me. Okay. Now you yeah. and your, like I said, you know your, your scoring your scoring average went up every year. I know. Um, yeah. and next year, you know what I'm saying, you become a full time starter. If, I, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, is this is this year Ronaldo Bachman? Did he come in? At, he at, came in with me. We came in together. They came in together. Yeah, we came in together. Okay. So that, was, that was probably the best class South Carolina's had in the 2000s, probably. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember he went, um, he went to the league. I played 14 years. Brandon Wallace, who also came in with us, yeah. he, he played with the Celtics that year. They won the championship. Uh -huh. the now. Yeah, I remember uh, Ronaldo coming out. I was like, um, I was surprised because he wasn't, you know, like he only yeah, averaged he like get, he wasn't. Like, how, how do you get to, no, no offense, man? I, yeah, I, no offense. I just did not see him going first round 20 a pick man just, can you explain that to me because I, I i mean he, he's talented but i just you know you wouldn't like the leading score on the mm -hmm. team and i'm not knocking him enough because he's a he's a solid player but i you know nine points eight rebounds keep how does that track you like how do you get drafted so what first happened round 20 a pick with that what happened was we i'm not hating man look i'm not I hating it. bro i get I, it i get it so we went to the nit i remember that I remember that. We won it my sophomore year. Then we came back yeah. and won it again my junior year. Gotcha. What happened was we played at Madison Square Garden. Mm. In my final, yeah. in the finals of the gotcha. NIT okay. in 2006. Okay. And um, man, he played like an animal. Like he really like, he had like a 21 and 18 game or something crazy like that in the semifinals. He was dunking on dudes, rebounding everything, and just doing his, you know, he he mentally he knew what he was doing. Like he would just dive in the stands like Rodman for no reason. Right. You know, getting the loose ball that he know he couldn't get. You know, and and you know, the New York Knicks people were there. It was there. And they right. saw that. And there was something about him that the crowd just loved. The commentators were talking about him like crazy. You know, he kind of overshadowed the games that like I had like I, I had like 23 and like 10 or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying but his what he was doing was so crazy you know I would come down you know he would he would block a shot pitch it up to me I run down just pitch it oh, back wow. to him he dunking on people so I think those two games really got him in gotcha okay. you know, you him, I, just, I was just curious I always wanted to know yeah, that. I test I mean he's six nine but he, he he plays just like Rodman. Rodman. He's okay. actually a little offensively better than Rodman. No. Okay. Um, so he he was just like doing all that crazy stuff, rebounding, running all over the place, right. doing all this wild stuff. You know that you know there was like a fan favorite kind of thing. Oh no! What was what was it like playing for uh, Coach Odom? You know what I'm saying? Man, loved it, loved it, man. Um, just 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 loved it, man. Um, a lot of like back then they known him for working with big men 
Yeah, he, he had Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, yep, Wake Forest. He, he was assistant coach of Virginia where Ralph Sampson was there. And they said he was like the guy who helped develop Ralph. Um, he had Rodney Rogers at Wake Forest. Mm, shout out Rodney Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys. And um, I thought he was a point guard's coach. The way that he coached me, the way that, you know, we just connected. We had an open dialogue, you know, from an intellectual standpoint. I mean, he helped me so much, you know, and I think he trusted in me, you know. Um, and like I had a very important conversation with him going into my sophomore year. Okay. That really changed the dynamics of my life. Cause you know, I was like, I was like a guy who, you know, just didn't smile much. Um, I didn't feel unhappy on the inside, but that's how I look, you know, from, from people who were, you know, on the outside looking in. Right. And, um, you know, it was just one of them things where, you know, he, he said some things to me that kind of helped me understand and just embrace who I was. What was that? You know, just, just a guy who had just gone through a lot of tragedy. You know, God chose this life for me because he, he, he felt like he gave me enough and equipped me with enough to get through it. And he and I had to embrace that. I had to embrace that my mom passed. I had to embrace it just, you know, if I meet somebody, I'm not saying I got to tell you this first conversation that we have right. once I meet you. Right. But like when you get to know me, I got to I got to go there. You know, I got to go there with my life. This is my life. I have to let you know about it. Um, you know, it was it, it helped open my eyes, you know, to just being a, a better person and knowing how to treat people and knowing how to greet people, knowing how to make people feel good, feel happy about themselves and, and be, you know, intriguing to others, and inspiring others, and motivate others by just having a good spirit. Do you feel like prior to that conversation, did you, did you ever feel like, you know, because as, you, as a young man we all mature we get older do you feel like you was kind of leaning towards that or that conversation kind of like you know broke the mold as far as trey kelly becoming the man that we see now well before then it was just a lot of clutter man you know a lot of rageful clutter a lot of thoughts in my mind you know, like i said a lot of sleepless nights is what you know wasn't able to get through things the way that i wanted to i kept them inside and bottled up so you know being being able to let it go and kind of open up to at least the closer people around me, you know, was like therapy, you know, because I, I was holding on to a lot of this information. Um, and, you know, just to be able to talk to my best friend in college about this, uh, what was bothering me. And I even remember having a team meeting when we were struggling a little bit as a team and I was just letting the guys know, like, you know, man, I know I don't, you know, I just don't seem approachable um, but you know, I've just been going through a lot of stuff, man, even before I got here. And that even helped, you know, them ask questions. Right. And, and and for me to answer those questions about my life and about my past at the time, you know, just helped me grow, you know, as a person, you know. Um, and it, and it, and then, you know, to be able to get through those things, it helped, it helped motivate others when I was to tell my story. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I started to understand and embrace the impact that I could have on others by just you know, just being open about, you know, what I've been through. No doubt, no doubt. Now look, um, like I said, we going into, you know, like I said, we about to wrap up your your, your college career, man, because we, we'll be all day talking about every game, every player that you played against, man, and I'm looking at the time. This definitely going to be a part two interview. I'm definitely, right. gonna, you know exactly. what I'm saying? So so um, I want to talk about, like, you know, what are some of your most memorable games you know, at the University of South Carolina, man. Like I said, you played against some some phenomenal players, man. But what's some of the games that really stood out to uh, to Trey Kelly? Uh, one game in particular, um, it's about four or five games that I could probably talk about. Come on. One game from an individual okay. standpoint. Okay. You know, we, um, it pro I don't know if it still stands, but I scored the fourth most points at Rep Arena at Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. I had 36 against Kentucky. Whew. And like I think only like David Robinson and like two other guys had scored more. Was that a Ron uh, Rondo? No, nah, Rondo wasn't really scoring like that. Um, I don't even think no, it was. No, no, no. I'm saying was that on Rondo? No, was Rondo, he there? Rondo had entered the draft already. Okay. On like um, jo actually, Jody Mix guarded me the whole game. Yeah, he was cooking. He was I remember cooking him. Jody. 
I remember going to Tubby Swift like, man, what you want me to do? <laughs> was cooking him. Then did you, did, did you, now, how did you transition as far as like, you know, that, that rage that, that you had, you know, in high school, man? You know, was it more control when you got into the league, man? How did you, did you tone it down? Like, I mean, I... I always had it, but it, it was it was more so what what I what I understood that it was just it was just me being competitive. I got you. You know the rage the ra you know the, the the rageful part and like the the madness part was more so coming out verbally. Got you. You know and, and, and just arguing with people when I was young, and, you okay. know, getting in fights and all that. But the competitive nature, the drive was just like ah. Gotcha, I'm gonna gotcha. break through this brick wall right now. Mm. I never stop wanting to break through that brick wall. Even even nowadays, if I step on the court and I play against you, then I got yeah. it. You know, so it was basically like a fire. Yeah, that you just yeah. Have, man. And I always had that man. Kurt Long yeah. told me one time. This when I was young. I was like, you know, probably junior in, in, in high school, and I never forget what he said. He, you know, he's like, uh, you know, he's pretty. Um, pretty like slick with his words and stuff like that. You know, he got his little sayings. And I know, all. I was just talking to Kurt on Pride yeah. on three three days ago. Yeah, he was like, man, you know what? <laughs> you, you, know, man, you know the best thing, man, I like about you, man, is that, you know, you don't, you ain't never need no jumper cables. You know what, what I'm saying? What do you mean by that? Just like, I, I, I never had to be motivated by somebody. Oh, self-motivated. To go in, to go in, to go in, yeah. just, you know, yeah. play and play hard. Yeah. Yeah. They want to win and all that. You know, he said, you know, I never needed a jump start from anybody. I just already had it when I got out there. I always want to ask you this, uh, Trey. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to read about you in the paper. And mm -hmm. I'm seeing this guy scoring all these points. Yeah. And I remember the year that, that I first saw you play was the year that my brother briefly played with you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize, man, that you're not like a, a big guy. <laughs> Do you ever feel like your, your, your height like you played with a chip on your shoulder, man, because around that time you had Allen Iverson like that. Was it was, you know, was was you you, you not being a, a typical six, four, six, five guard, you know what I'm saying? But you you still able to get your your shot off anyway on the court. Did that ever you ever felt like that played a, a, a role in, you know, that fire, that drive? To be honest with you, man, I, I just like like, you know, when my life started the way that it did in 96, and, and that being like my igniter point, I always felt like I just had a chip on my shoulder with life. Cause I was I was wondering like I remember I lost a football game when I was like by the, you know after my mom passed I was just yeah, like yeah. why is this happening like, I should win. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, in the playoffs and I'm like man I, I should win like why am I losing like you know yeah. why am I losing I should, I deserve to win right now. <laughs> you know, like I, just, I lost right. like, the woman in my life, and I go through all this. Like I should win. I was talking yeah. to God. <laughs> right, right, right. I, like, I looking, deserve this. I'm looking up. And I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm looking up with my helmet on. Like, like, what do you, oh, you play football too? Now, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we lost. We lost again. We lost the game. One of my last. When years. did you? When did you make that uh, business decision? So. <laughs> I'm like seventh grade. I said I just... seventh, maybe yeah. eighth. Um, I think. Yeah, eighth grade, but I was like, you know, basketball took over and, okay. and, and washed that away. So, okay. okay. But, you know, it was, it was just like, I guess when I, when I asked myself, you know, what do I do to make her proud? It was like, yeah. that's what I wanted to do the whole time. Right, right. And no matter what was happening, no matter who I was in front of, I was just, that's what I was trying to do. And it became natural to me to just want to do that. Nah, so, I, I, man, you know, I go and play, you know, I'm 37. I, I you know, I ain't playing professionally no more. Um, when, when, uh, when did you uh, just retire? When did you retire? Really in 2020. Okay, just, yeah, yeah go, a couple of years and, ago. Yeah, and I was still looking for a couple of opportunities, but I have a four-year-old son. And, the, you know, it's a little hard to just, you know, go back and forth now. And yeah. We got a, we got an unbelievable relationship. and That's beautiful. You know, yeah, so it's, you know, just, um, I had to ask that though, Trey, man, because like yeah. I said, man, for it's a guard exactly. that's not six four six five, you play so, like yes, six four six five, yeah, man. My thing was like the way you able to just get to I never, I never thought about my height. 
That's that's the that's what I'm trying to ask. Like, to be honest with you, like this goes like how the hell you like I don't even see you scoring against guys that six seven six eight. It's gonna be kind of funny, right? It's crazy. It's gonna be this is a funny thing that I would do sometime, right? So I always play big, like I always play like around the rim, and no people wouldn't even really consider me crazy athletic like that. But I can go in there with the six ten dudes and still lay it up, lay it up on top of them. Go in there, bump them, and yeah, steal. Yeah. And he was crafty, man. <laughs> I always felt like I was bigger. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Like when you look like walking, like you know, right, how you right, right. Walk somewhere and there's a mirror right there or, or a reflection of the glass. Like, like walk with dudes taller <laughs> than me. <laughs> but but I didn't feel that way, you know. Right, right. And even on film, like you watch a lot of film. And I look like little as hell on the back. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was just watching some highlights the other day. I was like, damn, man, he's able to right here look at like what and the I hell? Never felt like that. I, I have to look, I have to look at film and like I said, look at certain teammates that's like six five. Yeah, yeah. You're like, damn, I didn't know he was that taller than me, you know. But when I'm on the court with them, you know, I don't feel that way. Now, what would you classify yourself as, Trey? Like, like a point guard, two guard? No, I was always point guard, always. Point guard. Um, so, I, you know, I started out like just, I really just always did what the what I need, what the coach needed gotcha. me to do. Gotcha. Because you know, when I was at South Carolina, I didn't have to score that much the first couple of years. Yeah. You know, I was facilitated. I led the league in um, assists my junior year, um, and then he needed me to up the scoring load. Yeah. yeah. Like I averaged like nineteen. Yeah. Um, like you 20. led the team in scoring. Uh, your last two years, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was one of them things where I didn't really need to score. If I didn't need to score like that, and it was it was better for us to to have wins. Um, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't press it. You know, I, I can and I could always just get mine naturally. I'm the point guy. I got the ball in my hands so much. Right. That, you know, I'm able to you know take over games down the stretch, oh, no. get to the cup. You know, get to the line. You know, if I if I get a couple of open trades out, you know, I'll shoot those and make those. So, you know, I never really just went out and pressed it like that. I remember having a 54 point game in China, and I only took 28 shots. Jesus Christ, that's that's some efficiency yeah. for your ass. You think of somebody get 54, yeah, yeah. 39 times, and no you know all that. But you know, I never, I never been like a high volume shooter. I just shot it so well right. that we can get to the cut. You know. If you want you want your scoring average to be you want your scoring percentage to be good right. get to the cut you know there you, go. There you get you four go. layups you know you four for four to start the game you know there you, go. you go out there shooting a bunch of jays you never know how that's going to end up on certain nights so you you remind me that's why I, you remind me of this guy right here man yeah, he was tough yeah. that dude man like your game remind me of this yeah, guy met, right here I man him, i met him in uh in vegas um a couple years back okay um, yeah, we had a good conversation. I told him, man. He's a coaching. Um, yeah, he's doing is something. He, is he still at, uh, I think it was at Memphis or Kentucky, wasn't it? Yeah, probably. I think he's at Memphis now. Memphis, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, you know, you finished your, your career, man. And uh, what's what's some of the statistics you had at, um, uh, you know, like all time, you know, like, uh, you know, when you left, you know, when you left uh, South Carolina, like, all time assists when you rank it. Yeah, like, you know, I was so like I was top five in like everything. That's what's up. Um three pointers made. Okay. Um scoring. I was probably like eighth in scoring. Okay. Um I was the only player in school history with fifteen hundred points and five hundred assists. That's what's up. Does that stand that's that stands Yeah, like that Damn that's Trey. Hard. That's difficult. Man. That's difficult. You gotta be like you know, that's difficult, and the good, yeah. the better players who have the potential to do that, right? You know, they leave early or something. You know. Now, so let's, let's talk about that a little bit, Trey. Like, you know, I mean, when you look at the game today, man, what do you see? Um, you know, that's that's you feel like it's possibly lacking. You you, you hear a lot of people complain about the NBA today. A lot of people play mm -hmm. complain about college. What are some of the things that you notice in in college, um, and even the NBA, the game itself, man, that you may or you know that you that you uh have a problem with you know what i'm saying if if you if you have any you know you may not have any you know the, the thing that i that i that i started to worry about in regards to the draft process 
is that a guy can be there. Like I've seen player of the years not pan out because they played four years. They take the younger guys because they, they feel like they have better upsides, but they don't produce. You only have, you're going to have your feet arms, the guys like KD, right. one of these guys that are going to flourish all the time, but they don't, they don't drive for, uh, like I remember Frank Mason or somebody like that played with Kansas. He was player of the year and went like late second round. Yeah, yeah. He was player of the year. You know, I'm not saying you got to be the number one player, you know, to be because you're player of the year, but, you know, I played four years and I, I, I was, I was the first team all SEC. That's tough. The only person on the first team all SEC did not get drafted. Hmm. You know, Joe Kim Noah, Corey Brewer, Al Horford was all on that list. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So when you think about it, it's like they they punish you in a sense for staying. For staying. That, you know, I didn't want to say it, but I do. Yeah. They punish you in a sense for staying when, you, when you're just being polished. Why not bring the guy that's more established? Right into your organization and they do at times but i know. really see that i can't i mean what was the last four-year guy that got drafted in the first all, round? Right. all these guys that you know they come in they 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 they, they make downs all americans and they they coming in early right you know one year maybe two years and it's, it's right. different right. you think like, that all, like all the top five top seven top eight guys in this upcoming class are going to be one-year guys Kid what do you think about that um, like as far as like robberies, because it seemed like robbery. In my opinion, you know, it don't. The it robberies are not the same. What's your, what's your take on that? Robberies are not the same because there's a lot of one and done. Exactly. When you're getting a lot of like when Duke plays Kentucky, when Duke plays uh, North Carolina, when North Carolina plays uh, Kentucky or Kansas, right? Um, it's so much. It's so many one and dones mm -hmm. that they don't get a chance to establish that. Remember back in the day. You know, Rashi Wallace, Jerry Stackhouse. Oh, man. Man. Jeff they McKinnis. Were, yeah, they were there at least two or three years. Yeah, man. When you look at... Um, three, nah, three, three or four, Trey. <laughs> it was, I'm saying, I'm two saying was at the very least. I, I see what you're saying. I yeah, at the very I mean, least. You know, you're right, um, right, right. You're right, 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 right. Uh, uh, Duke with um, Jason Williams and all those Del guys. Brand. Yeah, those guys were there. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't one and done. So, you, you know... These guys are they coming in and it's over with. Like as soon as they their first year is done, they're gone. You know, ben okay. Simmons and, um, you know, these guys, like like I said, the first eight guys this year, the kid from Duke, the kid from um Auburn, um, the kid from Gonzaga, yeah. home, um, the kid from Purdue. Um, oh, those are freshmen, and those yeah. are the top four or five picks for yeah. sure in the, in, yeah. in the draft coming. So, um, like the rivalries, they they have been they've been fizzling out these last few years because it's right. more one and dones. And when you got one and dones, it's basically a bunch of kids who are not established, and you know they don't know how to treat those rivalries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Now you um. You, you, you started your international career that's a, like immediately after college. You know, yeah. I think you started off with Croatia, I believe. Yeah, I played in Zagreb, Croatia first. So what, what was that like, man, going to, you know, playing overseas, man? Because I think a lot of people underrate the talent that is overseas, man. Yeah, it was, it was for me, man, it was, it was just a new beginning, you know. Um, I enjoyed it, you know, kind of out on your own as a, as a young man. Um, you're able to play the game that you love. Right. You know, when the checks started like rolling in, you're like, damn. Hey, man, don't sleep on them checks, man. Oh, man. Like, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sleep on them checks. And be they better than Metro checks that I get. <laughs> Listen, man, I, you know, at that time, you know, you don't spend money like that on a yeah. monthly basis. So, you know, you getting this kind of money coming in every month, yeah. doing what you love, man. This. And, you know, and to work hard and to push yourself. And, and you're doing something you love, Trey. That's yeah, how I look at it, man. You're doing all this time. So, right. you know, um, you know, basketball is second nature no matter where it's played. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people overthink it. You know, I was more of an adapter. You know, I, I, I adapted to, you know, the cultures and everything, different cultures that I, that I lived in, you know, for you 10 speak some languages. Um, I did, man. I kind of fell off of that. You know, um, I plan on 
you know, when my son gets old enough, revisiting those places, kind of relearning the language and stuff like that, um, especially with him. So, um, no, I, I enjoyed it, man. That first year I played in the, the hometown of uh, Drazen Petrovic. Mm. Yeah, he his statue was outside of our arena, um, almost like Jordan's is in Chicago. Wow. I remember when yeah. he passed. So I played with his old team. I remember when he played. I, re I remember when he passed away. I remember talking to my elementary school teacher about it. Um, and it was, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a great experience to begin. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, where did you um, stay at the longest? You know, where, where did you? Where did um, in the latter part of my career, um, I was in Turkey for five years. Okay. And I stayed Istanbul. There. Istanbul. I played. So I played in Istanbul, Ankara, Izmir. Okay. Okay. Um, those are the three top cities in Turkey. Okay. So, but Istanbul is my favorite place. Why is that? Man, lovely, man. Just to be able to live there for 10 months at a time. Mm. Um, the food is, is really good. It's really clean and like the, the, the landscaping is, is, is really neat. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like it gives you a, a mixture of like LA, New York and Miami all in one. Damn. You know, it has this water, you know, it has this like really upscale places. Um, just a really, really nice place, man. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, like I said, man, you had, you you know, you enjoyed, uh, like I said, man, a successful 14. I, I'm taking, I'm looking at some of these numbers right here. 18, 19, I mean, just, I mean, you was, you were still lighting up even overseas, man, doing your thing. Yeah. You know, when you think back on this, this illustrious career, and, I, and I'm saying illustrious, man, because again, to make it where we from, to come where we from, man, to to mm -hmm. to uh, persevere through the adversity that you went through as a child, that traumatic experience, to have this uh, this great high school career, this really uh, great uh, college career, and mm -hmm. 14 years as a pro, to me, that's 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 a you know that's that's illustrious to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I when I think when you think back, man, you know what are some of your most proud proud moments? You know, out of all okay. of that, you know, I have a couple. From college, you know, when we when we were in the NIT, um, I was able to bring my grandmother down on the floor. Okay. And if we, and like you said, we we have a part two. Um, whenever you want to schedule that, we got to talk about her. You know, we got to talk about her. She she you can't talk about my life without talking about her. No doubt. Um, for no doubt. sure. Um, so um, I was able to bring her down on the Madison Square Garden's floor accept the all tournament team trophy with me Man, and hold up the NIT championship trophy with me. So I, I would never forget that um, as, as one of one of my, if not most memorable moments um, in, in my career. Um, you also go to, let's see, winning the championship in Venezuela, back to back. Um, back, to back. Okay. Probably the most passionate fans that I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Um, are they, are they as, as passionate about basketball as they are about uh, football, soccer? Yeah, so it's crazy down there. They love the game of basketball. Um, so that that was that was that was like some very memorable moments. And then winning the championship in Turkey in 2016. That's what's up, Trey. That's yeah. man. Hey, brother, man, I'm so proud of you, man, to just to see this this road that you you know that you stayed on, man, throughout mm -hmm. uh, all the, the the adversity, man. And, you know it's amazing and i feel like you're one of the the, the best stories that ever came out of the city yeah i appreciate that i appreciate no, that. No doubt. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been blessed man you know to be able to to do this thing for so long um you know the way that it started you just didn't you didn't know what to expect no doubt. With, with all of the things that has happened um but you know i'm proud that i was able to have that kind of drive and have that kind of fortitude to just keep moving forward um, well, it was it was big for me, and and to be able to look back on my, you know, my life as a basketball player, man, you know, I couldn't ask for more. No doubt. When you now that you you know you you've been back home for a couple of years, man, what it, how does it feel to be back home, man? I know a lot of, a lot has changed, man. What are some of the things that you've yeah. noticed, you know? Um, you know, just just how much the city um just 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 needs my mind and my heart. Um, to, to be honest with you, you know, just just looking at the state of high school basketball. Looking at the state of DC basketball, period. Um, you know, knowing all I know and, and learning all the things I've learned along the way is is one of the bigger reasons why I, you know I was I had it in my heart to 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 take the Dunbar High School coaching job. 
um, because I want to give back. You know, and this is this is my start. I mean, I've I've given back in plenty of ways over the years and having you know toy drives and back to school yeah, yeah. and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But I'm talking about really, really, you know, giving back and, and, and being in the lives of these young men no who are walking the same lines that I walked, you know, 25 years ago. Yeah, no doubt, uh, Trey. Um, like I said, man, um, it's, it's when I when I just sit back, man, I look at the state of uh, you know DC basketball. You think we gonna be able to get them robberies back, man? I think we can. What, what, what you think it's gonna take? I, I think it just takes you know for for some of these kids to to, to not go to Catholic school and to stay in the DCIAA to 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 believe in the DCIAA because all it takes is just the players. You know, it takes the players, you know. Um, all the same players that are going there, let's say in two years, all of them are coming to the DCIAA. Gotcha. Yeah. And now, you know, the, the, the city's back. Um, the city, you know, they're coming to see these guys. You know, I was at the, I was at the Wilson Coolidge game and they were standing room only. That's what's those up. Were, those are the two best teams in the DCIAA. Other than that, you don't really get that kind of attendance. So, you know, to get these kids to, like I said, stay around, um, stay in their cities that they grow up in, and, and go to school in the neighborhoods that they grow up in. You know, I think I think we'll, we'll help this thing get going. I'm surprised, man. You know, with the with the way the city has been gentrified, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm surprised that they you guys have enough kids in the area. <laughs> you yeah. know, that play sports, man. Because I, I, let me say this, Trey, and I don't know if you have noticed it, but when we were younger, staying in the house was almost like punishment. Yeah. And, like nowadays when I drive in the summertime, springtime, I don't see the kids on the courts like they used to, Trey. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm tripping, man. Like, I, you know, I live here in PG County, but I'm I, when I go into the city, whether I'm out here in PG, PG County, Mo County, whatever. I mean, do you feel like, you know, there's a there's a wane in interest in, in, in sports? Like, I don't I don't know. I just, I, I'm just saying I don't I don't see it. It don't look like how it used to look. Right. It's inside the city. The violence is taking over so much and the drugs are taking over so much. I mean, I'm, I ain't talking about cocaine or nothing like it was in the 80s. I'm talking about all the stuff these youngins are smoking, you know, kids. Yeah, yeah, taking them away from, you know, what, you know, something else they could be doing. But the biggest factor, man, that I think that is taking the opportunity away from these kids is the them taking away the boys and girls clubs. They don't have though. You, you just can't go to the corner no more and go into right. the girls club and just get on the basketball team, get on the football. Yeah, team. yeah that's sad, man. Every, yeah. All these organizations they're making these, making these parents. I was talking to my uncle the other day. They're making these parents pay all these fees. And all, that stuff was taken care of by the boys and girls exactly. club. Exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, you go play in the tournament. Your your, your parents don't have to pay for nothing. Yeah, I know like three, four. That's just gone. They just they yeah. don't even have anymore. They don't, they don't have number 12. Number never number 15 is gone. Yeah, they don't have number number 14 is not even, you know, they have the the the, the building is there, but they don't have basketball team. Right, right. They don't have basketball camps and stuff like that no more. Um, they don't have football teams, they don't even have the leagues no more. The Boys and Girls Club League. So the them taking away that, man, it caused a huge problem. And now the kids just really don't have anything better to do. Outlets. Yeah, just just being outside. You be outside. We hear about oh, they, oh, they playing with number twelve. Oh, I want to play with number twelve. So yeah, now, that was that was that was a big thing. Like being a, a young kid, you know, hey, I play with number twelve. I play number, you know, I play with Woodridge. Yeah. That was that was big, man. You they be able to fuck the chest up. They don't have that no more. So yeah. that's man to try in that. That's something. That's something that man, you know. I don't know how, but you know that's something that needs to be talked about, and you know, kind of seeing if 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 I can be a part of, kind of getting that back somehow. Because these kids, are, you know, I don't care, man. DC needs about ten different teams that the parents don't have to pay for. Right. I mean, right. Man, AU teams charging these kids to come and try out. Yeah. Yeah. Ten yeah. year olds, man. Yeah. Seven year olds, twelve year olds, eight year olds. Seventy-five dollars, fifty dollars. Crazy man. To try out, man. Yeah, we wouldn't even have some of the legends such as yourself if we had, if we, if it was like it is today. If you yeah, think about then, it. then who knows? I mean, who knows? You got 
let's say let's say let's say my son is, 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 is plays ball right right i'll take him to saint james or one of these wherever they're having these games that i gotta pay to get in i gotta pay to get in to take my kid to watch him play ball or nah Trey, or I gotta, if, I, me. if i don't if i don't have it or if i don't even want to pay them ten dollars because if, if this is every day let's say you gotta watch your kid play let's say you have a weekend tournament friday saturday sunday you gotta pay every day or pay for the pass to get yeah. in there Hey, but that's risk. crazy that's crazy man oh man well, who, do, who do we need to talk i'm supposed to be interviewing red grant uh next week man i gotta i want to he needs i know he's running for me and and and, and i i know he if he go win but i got i got relation you know i know Treyon white and know he, he running too but I, that's something that needs to be brought up man you need to hear about that man yeah we need to give these kids a, a outlet man i you what you just told me i had no idea trey that's what they're doing yeah, I had no idea. That's exactly what they're doing, man, and that's that's just unfair no all the way. You know, mm -hmm. like they, you know, like when you go and try out, right? Let's say for I'm not going to name any organization, but you go and try out for a certain organization, right? That certain organization already got six kids that don't have to try out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got seventy five kids in there that are paid thirty dollars, fifty dollars to come and try out. And you only gonna keep two? Damn. You're getting money from yeah. children, man. I mean, I know the parents are paying, but that's a finesse right there. Yeah, like, come on, man. That's yeah. that's not how it's supposed to be done, man. Yeah, and yeah. Until we fix those kind of problems, or and, and or create more teams, such as the boys and girls club style teams, I think the problem will remain the same because the kids are going to go to those bigger organizations. If they're from D.C., they're going to want to play in those bigger organizations. That's going to weed out the rest of these kids, and the rest of these kids are going to fall behind, not play ball, start hanging out with their friends, smoking weed, you know, getting into trouble. That's just that's just going to be, remain a cycle until we're able to fix it. You feel like the landscape has kind of changed a little bit as far as, like, uh, Dunbar, when you walk in the, uh, the halls in Dunbar, does it is – it, is it familiar? You know, does it look how it looked? You know, back when you was in school. But what's some of the things that, that that has changed with the kids? It's it's different. They they just look so young these days. They you know act so young. There's not a lot of maturity there um, because, like like I said, they they lack experiences. Right. You know, like by the time I got to Dunbar, I had played. You know, I played all over the place. You know, right. play with all these teams and play with, you know, was around more groups of people, you know, at certain times, and they just don't get the chance to do that. Right. So you know, a lot of kids they come in there, and I was trying to find myself too, but they're more so just trying to find themselves, find out who they are, and then that's it's easier to coerce them to do certain things from a negative standpoint because right. maybe they think that's cool. Right. Because now this is the first group of kids that you actually hung out with mm. you play on a basketball team you run track right. you ain't really been doing this with a, with large groups of kids over the years right. so now this is your first chance right. and and you don't know how to react you don't know how to interact with those kids so now different things can happen you know good or bad but most so it's, it's, it's not a positive thing because you know, like I said, you can they can get you to just do anything. You just thinking it's cool, right? So until we fix that, man, I think we're gonna still have the, this kind of problem. Okay. I think just with my new position at Dunbar, man, I'm gonna try to try to you know change the wave, man. Just try to get some of these kids to, to stay inside of town. No doubt. Well, look, Trey, man, really enjoyed uh, you know just blessing us with your presence on the presence on this platform, man. Like I said, man, I can't say it enough, man. I, I'm very proud of you, man. You're a legend in my eyes, and not just my eyes, man. You, you, very inspirational, uh, you know, story, man. You know, for somebody to come out of the city and to make it to the heights that you have ascended to, and just continue to just, you know, uh, share your wisdom and experience with, uh, yeah. with the kids within the community, man. So, uh, where I can't, I can't uh, say it enough, man. Just, just thank you, brother. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you having me, man. I, I appreciate the content. And you know, it kind of being an unfiltered thing, you know, because like I said, you know, that, you know, me, me being able to share my story has, has helped me mentally, you know, over the years and, and just yeah. embracing just, just who I am and what I went through. 
and how that can make an impact on others. So you know, that's what I'm all about, especially, you know, at the, at the end of my career going into coaching, you know, I'm gonna share this story with my kids, you know, probably on the first day. No oh, doubt. No. Understand what, what inspiration looks like and for them to understand what hope looks like because you know, I want them to understand that I, you know, I went to DC Public School and went straight to the SEC from there. Just like yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it, you know. Hard work and dedication. Yep. So you know, um, now I appreciate you having me, man. If, if there's a part two, I know there's other things that you know we can touch on. Um, no. You know, and and it still be an, an amazing story, even if we talk about you know the branches of the, the you know the, the the time that I've had in my experience. So I appreciate you, man. No, no doubt, man. Look, I'm going to lock our reef, man. You're watching Bridging the Generation podcast, man. I got the one, the only, the legendary himself, man, Mr. Trey Kelly. We signing out, man. Thank you, brother. All right. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Take care. You have a good night, bro. All right. All right.